Once upon a time, there lived a girl named Dorothy who lived with her Uncle Henry and Auntie Em in Kansas. Their house was very small. They lived together in a cottage in the countryside. Dorothy loved to run and play in the fields with her dog Coco. One day, as she was playing outside, the sky darkened and a storm began to brew. In a panic, her aunt and uncle started closing the windows while calling out to Dorothy. Dorothy, quick, to the shelter! Hurry! A tornado is approaching! Dorothy and Coco ran home. But just before they reached the shelter, the tornado started spinning and spinning the little cottage and blew it away from its foundations. Coco and Dorothy were whirling with the house. Dorothy held on to her little dog tightly, waiting for the tornado to end. Oh, don't be scared, Coco. It'll be over soon. Finally, the house landed somewhere with a big thud. After the storm, when everything had calmed down, Dorothy and Coco got out of the house. They couldn't believe their eyes. They were in a totally different place. Everywhere was filled with sparkling and colorful flowers. Suddenly, several tiny fairies rushed out from among the flowers and greeted them. In front of them all was the Fairy Queen. Welcome, Dorothy. I'm the Good Fairy of the North. I've come here with my protective fairies to congratulate you. Hello, Queen of the Fairies. I'm very pleased to meet you, but I don't understand why you are congratulating me. With the great tornado that brought your house here with you, you blew the Wicked Witch of the West far, far away. You saved the country from a huge danger. Oh, really? Thank you very much, Madame. At least there was a benefit to my house blowing away. Look here, Dorothy. These are the shoes that the Wicked Witch of the West has always wanted. She had just gotten a hold of them, but she must have dropped them as she flew away. Wear these shoes right away. You will need them in the future. Not understanding why, Dorothy took off her shoes and wore the new pair right away. My dear fairy, how will I return home? Can you help me, please? I'm sorry, but only the Wizard of Oz can help you, Dorothy. You must go to the city where he lives. For this, you must follow this path that you see and go straight past the forest. Once you arrive to the city, you will see the palace before you. Goodbye! Suddenly, all the fairies lit up brightly and flew away. Dorothy and Coco started walking down the path that the fairies had mentioned, not before long. They arrived at a field. It was a golden field of wheat. Suddenly, they heard a sound. Hey, beautiful girl, please help me. Dorothy turned and looked behind her. There was a scarecrow standing and waiting there. He was tied to a post trying to free himself. Upon seeing the talking scarecrow, Dorothy ran right up to him, surprised. Please save me from this post. I want to be free. If only I had a brain, maybe I would find a way to escape. We're going to the Wizard of Oz to ask him to help us get home. If you join me and Coco, maybe you can ask him for a brain. That's a wonderful idea. Of course I'd love to. Go on then, me from this post so we can continue on our way. Dorothy saved the Scarecrow from the post at once. Now the three of them started their journey together. Finally, they arrived at the forest. Propped up against a tree by the side of the road, they saw a tin man. He was busy oiling his screws and was whistling away. Hello, little girl and friends. Where are you headed? Dorothy told him everything that had happened. Let me come with you. Maybe he'll give me a heart. Why not? Of course you can come. Together, they walked a long way. It was getting very dark. It became pitch black. 
Dorothy noticed a pair of glowing eyes behind a tree. Hey, who are you? Come out! Be careful, Dorothy. What are you doing? What if it's a monster? It's not. Don't worry. Hey, you! Come out, I said! All of a sudden, a lion slowly came out from behind the tree. He was trembling with fear. He was very fearful. Hello. Please don't hurt me. I'm a very good lion and I'm very scared. I have no self-confidence at all. Dorothy was very sad to see the lion like this. They took him with them to see the Wizard of Oz. I hope you'll be able to find what you're looking for there as well, Mr. Lion. A few hours later, they reached the city and asked for directions to the palace of the Wizard of Oz. Once they walked past the city gates, they realized that they had arrived somewhere incredibly beautiful. The city was surrounded with bright lights and wonderful flowers. Birds happily chirping could be heard everywhere. Together, they approached the guards of the palace. We've come to see the Wizard of Oz. Can you please let him know? Suddenly, the doors of the palace opened and with the guards they appeared before the wizard. The Wizard of Oz was a lovely old man sitting on a magnificent throne in a very fancy outfit. Why do you want to see me? Dorothy explained everything that had happened. The old wizard was a kind-hearted man. He was very sad for the little girl. Actually, I can grant all of your wishes. However, the wicked witch of the West holds a wand. This wand is magical and incredibly powerful. It breaks all the spells that I cast. First, you must get this wand back. You should have sent your soldiers. Maybe you could have gotten it back. She knows my soldiers very well. She sends them back from halfway when she sees them approaching. Since she doesn't know us, we should try our luck and maybe we will succeed. You are very brave, Dorothy. There's nothing else I can do other than wish you luck. I'll await your good news. That night, the Wizard of Oz invited them to stay as his guests in the palace. The next morning, the four friends set off together. As they approached the castle, the Wicked Witch of the West was shocked at what she saw. Who are they? A scarecrow, a tin man, the Lion King, and the very beautiful girl. Hmm. Because she didn't know who they were and why they were coming to her castle, she sent four of her witch soldiers to capture them immediately. Soldiers, arrest those who are approaching and lock them in the dungeon at once. Let's see why they are visiting me. The four witches flew down, captured the four friends and locked them in the dungeon. No! What are they going to do to us? They're going to cut us and eat us for sure. Mummy! Why have they locked up us here? Frightened, they waited as the Wicked Witch of the West approached them. Are you Dorothy? You will come with me to the tower. You'll explain to me what it is you want. The witch held on tightly to her magical wand. Suddenly, she noticed Dorothy's shoes. These were the shoes that she had always wanted, but had accidentally dropped while being blown away by the tornado. She needed to take these shoes from Dorothy one way or another. With the shoes, her magical powers would grow stronger. When they reached the top of the tower, they started to talk. Tell me, Dorothy, that's your name, isn't it? Why have you come to my castle? I want to return to my home in Kansas. That's why I've come to you. They said only you could make this happen. Of course. 
though I have one condition. You must give me those shoes. No, I can't. I need them. Even though Dorothy did not know what the shoes were good for, she remembered what the fairy had said. This answer angered the Wicked Witch of the West, and she realized she would not be able to take the shoes just by talking. So, you're not giving them to me, are you? I know how to take them. Come here, you! They ran in circles through the tower as Dorothy was being chased. Since the shoes were magical, the witch couldn't catch Dorothy, not even using magic. The Wicked Witch of the West started to get dizzy from all the running around. Suddenly, she lost her balance and fell from the very top of the tower. When she fell to the ground, she turned into a huge black rock. Just before she fell, she dropped her magical wand. Dorothy took the wand immediately and headed to the dungeon to free her friends. Dorothy, you're here at last. We were worried sick. Where's the witch? Yes, where's the witch? They're not going to eat us, are they? Forget the witch for now. We need to take this one to the Wizard of Oz right away. In no time, they escaped from the castle and headed right to the palace of the wizard. As the Wizard of Oz held the magical wand in his hands, a smile formed on his face. Finally, all evil has come to an end. This is because of you, Dorothy. Now, let's come to everyone's wishes. With a magical wand, the wizard granted the Tin Man a heart. The Scarecrow a brain. And the Lion courage. Everyone was filled with joy. The Lion kept on roaring away. Now time for you, Dorothy. Come next to me. Listen to me well. When you tap the shoes that you're wearing on the ground three times, all of your wishes will come true. You can finally go home and be reunited with your family. The friends, who realized that they would now be parting from one another, hugged each other. Dorothy, because of you I have a brain and can't think. Look, if it weren't for you, I'd be stuck on that post in the field. Yes, Dorothy. And now I have a heart. I love you. And because of you, I am now a brave lion. Now let others be afraid of me. I'm so glad to have met you all. You were great road companions. Thank you so much. Time to go. Come on, Coco. Are you ready to go back home? Dorothy took Coco in her arms and tapped her feet three times. She suddenly found herself at home. Uncle Henry and Auntie Em hugged her tightly. She told them everything that had taken place. But now she was home. She could play with Coco in the fields once again. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a woman who desperately wanted a child, but could not bear one. She cried every day from sadness. One day, as she cried, a fairy appeared before her. Why are you crying? Tell me, maybe I can help. I have no one. I want a daughter. She would be a friend to me. OK, don't cry anymore. I'm going to give you a seed. Plant it and place it where it can get plenty of sunshine. Also, sing to it every day. When it grows and blooms, you will see a surprise. The woman did everything as the fairy said. She sat by the flower pot and sang to it every day. One day, she saw a small sprout. Soon after, the sprout turned into a pink rosebud. The woman was so joyful and happy. One day, as she was smelling the rose, she kissed it. 
Suddenly, the rose petals slowly started to unfold. Inside was a blonde-haired, pink-cheeked little girl as small as a thumb. She was so shocked and delighted. She realized why the fairy had given her that seed. She immediately took the girl into her palms and started talking to her. My beautiful girl, welcome to your home. I'm your mother. Your name shall be Thumbelina. She immediately made a cradle for her out of walnut shells, a bed out of violet leaves and a blanket out of rose petals. Thumbelina was so happy with her mother. She sang songs and danced with her. Her mother filled a cup with water and placed some walnut shells inside. Thumbelina would ride around with the leaves and shells for hours. Time passed and Thumbelina had grown, yet she was still tiny. One night, as Thumbelina was sleeping in her bed, an ugly frog entered through a gap in the window. He stared at Thumbelina as she slept. Hmm, oh, she's so beautiful, just the perfect girl to be my daughter-in-law. He slowly picked her up and placed her next to the pond in the garden. His son immediately ran towards his father. This girl who is to be my wife is so beautiful, father. Let's keep her on this lotus flower until we prepare everything so that she doesn't escape. In the morning, Thumbelina, who opened her eyes on the lotus flower, noticed she was in the middle of the pond, was very scared and so started crying. All the fish in the pond that heard her voice swam towards her. Why are you crying? What's wrong? <laughs> what am I doing here? I was happily sleeping in my bed. I opened my eyes and I'm here. I want to go home to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> that ugly frog and his son put you here. Apparently you're going to get married. Don't you want to? No, no! Help me, please! <laughs> All the fish started gnawing at the stalk of the lotus flower rooted at the bottom of the pond. As the stalk broke, the lotus started drifting with the wind. It floated all the way to the side of the pond. But this time, a beetle living on the tree saw Thumbelina. Oh, an interesting insect that doesn't look like us. Let me take it home so my friends can see it too. He immediately grabbed Thumbelina and took her to his home in the tree. His friends were very surprised. It looks just like a human. Take her away. We don't want her in our home. The beetle thought he had upset his friends, so he took Thumbelina and left her in the forest. Thumbelina, who was incredibly hungry and thirsty, was trying to drink water from the flowers. Since she couldn't find anything to eat, she felt weak. The weather was also extremely cold, so she started shivering. Her clothes were even for summer. She walked for a long time to find some shelter. Finally, in front of a small pile of soil, a door appeared. She knocked on the door with joy. An elderly lady mouse opened the door. I'm very cold and very hungry. Please take me into your home. <laughs> and who are you? My name is Thumbelina. I'm gonna tell you everything that has happened. But first, can you please take me inside? I'm so cold. <laughs> Come on in, beautiful Thumbelina. When she went in, Mrs. Mouse fed Thumbelina until she was full. And she told Mrs. Mouse everything that had happened to her one by one. As they were living together, one day, someone knocked on the door. They had a visitor. Oh, welcome, Mr. Mole. Thank you all. Uh, 
and who is this beautiful girl, Miss Mouse? Let me introduce you. This is Thumbelina. We live together now. Very nice to meet you, sir. Admiring the beauty of Thumbelina, Mr. Mole was now visiting Mrs. Mouse's house every day. He would bring lots of gifts and food to get Thumbelina's attention. After some time, Mr. Mole decided to speak to Thumbelina. Thumbelina, I like you very much. I'd like to marry you and start a family. That is if you would like to, of course. Mr. Mole, thank you very much. You're a gentleman, but I'm not thinking about getting married. At night, Mrs. Mouse wanted to speak to Thumbelina about this. She thought Thumbelina could be happy. You don't want to get married, but let's just go to his house together. If you change your mind, you'll see what kind of a home he'll be living in. What do you say? Actually, Thumbelina didn't want to marry Mr. Mole because moles live under the ground without seeing the sun. This was not appropriate for her. She was a girl of sunshine. Thumbelina didn't want to break Mrs. Mouse's heart, so she followed her and headed straight to Mr. Mole's home. But before they got there, they saw an unconscious pigeon on the way. Thumbelina ran right over to it. She wanted to know what had happened. When she carefully examined it, she realized that the pigeon's wing was injured. She rushed back home, grabbed the first aid kit, and returned to the unconscious pigeon. She dressed the wound and wrapped it tightly. The white pigeon that opened her eyes even managed to drink some water. I'll never forget your kindness, Thumbelina. One day I will help you too. At night, Thumbelina talked to Mrs. Mouse. Dear Mrs. Mouse, there are a few things I need to tell you. First of all, I don't want to marry Mr. Mole. He belongs to the underworld and me on earth to the sun. Also, thank you so much for everything you've done for me. You saved my life, but I miss my mother and my home very much. I will ask the pigeon to take me home as soon as she heals. Okay, Thumbelina, as you wish, as long as you're happy. Anyone in my place would have done the same. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Same here, Mrs. Mouse. I will miss you very much. A few days later, the pigeon was healed. I'm better now, Thumbelina, and I need to go. Do you need anything? Yes, I would like to ask you to take me home. Can you do this for me? With pleasure. Thumbelina bid farewell to Mrs. Mouse and climbed on the pigeon's back. They flew up in the sky. In order to not fall from the wind, Thumbelina held on tightly to the pigeon. They finally arrived at Thumbelina's house. Mrs. Pigeon dropped her off among the flowers in the garden and she thanked her again as she soared towards the sky. Thumbelina, who was finally home after months of being away, ran to her mother and gave her a big hug. Her mother was overjoyed. God, what a beautiful day. I'm so happy. We're finally reunited. Welcome, my beautiful girl. I've missed you very much. I've missed you too, Mother. I'll tell you everything I've been through. Let's never be apart again, okay? After all that had happened, Thumbelina never went far from the home. And she played with the flowers in the sunny garden. One day, she noticed a very special, sparkling, beautiful flower like the sun. Wow, what a different flower. I don't think I've ever seen it around here. Thumbelina jumped from flower to flower and approached that flower. And right at that moment, the petals of the sparkling flower opened up. Thumbelina, who saw a handsome tiny man just like herself, was shocked. Oh, who are you? I'm this garden's fairy. And you, beautiful girl, who are you? 
My name is Thumbelina. My mother chose this name because I'm so tiny. This is our garden, but I've never seen you here before. Both the flower fairy and Thumbelina had never come across anyone their own size. With this astonishment, they liked each other at the first glance. As time passed, they would wander around the garden, play games and spend time together. And one day... Thumbelina, I'd like to ask you something. Will you marry me? Thumbelina was very happy upon hearing his proposal. Because, finally someone who she loved to spend time with, whom she could always live with among the flowers, and if she married, could live close to her mother, had proposed to her. Of course, my prince! As a wedding gift, the flower fairy sprinkled Thumbelina with fairy dust, and all of a sudden, Thumbelina had wings! The flower fairy and Thumbelina lived happily ever after in her mother's garden. Once upon a time, there lived a carpenter named Geppetto. His wood carvings were very much appreciated by everyone. This carpenter, who was very skillful in his work, loved to make puppets from wood. His shop was filled with these puppets. Sometimes he would sell these puppets and sometimes he would gift them to children. His biggest wish was to have a child. My dear God, if only I had a child that could play with these toys I make. He could also be a companion to me in the long winter nights. One day, he went to the forest. He was looking for the appropriate wood for the new puppet he was going to make. This is just the wood I'm looking for. Solid but soft enough to carve. I can easily make the nose, mouth and arms out of this. It's going to be a wonderful puppet. He placed the log he had found on his shoulders and headed back to his shop and placed it on his counter. Got to work. Suddenly, he heard a sound. Ow! Oh. Where's this voice coming from? He continued carving again. Ow! I think I'm dreaming. This sound can't be coming from the log. I must be imagining things. Thinking that the voice had come from outside, Geppetto continued working. With great patience and thoroughness, he finished the puppet's head, body, arms and legs. He was admiring his work. What a beautiful puppet it turned out to be. But it needs clothes and shoes. He dressed his puppet with the children's overalls and shoes that he had in the shop. It turned out to be such a lovely boy, he placed the puppet on his table. Since I don't have any children, I can be friends with this puppet. I've even got a name for him. Yes, Pinocchio it is. Your name shall be Pinocchio, little puppet. He started to clean his counter, but just then heard a sound behind him. Good evening. He turned around, but there was no one except the puppet. He continued cleaning. Hello, Father Geppetto! Suddenly, Pinocchio jumped from the table to the floor. He started wandering around the shop. My God! Pinocchio the puppet has come to life! Surprisingly, his eyes wide open, he was watching him. Pinocchio wasn't human, but he was talking, walking and playing. Days and weeks passed. Geppetto was so happy. Pinocchio never left the carpenter's shop. He would help him with all his work and at night they would sit and chat by the fireplace. 
Pinocchio, can you pass the saw? Of course, father. Pinocchio, where are the nails? Right here. This way, they lived happily for a couple of years. It was time for Pinocchio to go to school. But they had no money to buy a notebook, a pencil, or a school bag for him. Geppetto had a watch that belonged to his father. He brought this watch to an antique shop, sold it, and gave all the money to Pinocchio. Pinocchio, this is your money, but I'm giving it to you to buy the things you need for school. Go and buy yourself a notebook, a pencil, and a school bag, and head straight to school. Pinocchio put all the money in his pocket and headed for school. As he was looking at the shops on his way, people noticed him and were staring. What a strange child with a wooden puppet look, they said. After some time, a huge colourful tent appeared before him. There was a crowd at the door, giving money and going in. With curiosity, he came to the door. There was a clown at the door making people laugh and taking the people who gave him money inside. Sir, what is this tent? What's inside? Can I go in? This is a circus! You can't go in if you don't have money. He remembered the money in his pocket, which his father had given him to go to school. I have money. Here you go. He went in. Inside, there was someone on stage that was making the puppets talk and dance. These are puppets just like me! With the happiness of seeing someone just like him, Pinocchio jumped onto the stage. The puppeteer that noticed him screamed in shock. Oh my god, this puppet moves all by himself. I'm going to make so much money out of him. <laughs> hey little one, come here. There's an amazing animal show inside. Do you want to watch? Really? I sure would. Where? In this room? Pinocchio, who believed the puppeteer, went into the room. But as soon as Pinocchio went in, the puppeteer locked him in the room. Poor Pinocchio was very, very sad and was crying. <laughs> what a big mistake I've made. I spent the school money. I also disobeyed my father, so now I'm in trouble. <laughs> what am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> a good fairy that saw Pinocchio crying with regret entered through the open window and landed on the table in the room that Pinocchio was in. With her magical wand, sparkling wings and blonde hair, she was a beautiful fairy. Ooh. Hi Pinocchio. Don't worry, I'm going to save you. But first, you should tell me everything that's happened. But don't forget, you must tell me the truth. Um, uh, my dad gave me money to come to the circus, but out of nowhere, a man locked me in here. Pinocchio, whose nose suddenly started growing, was in shock. Oh, what's going on? I told you that you need to tell me the truth, Pinocchio. If you lie, your nose will grow even longer. Pinocchio apologized and told the fairy the whole truth. His nose immediately turned back to normal. Pinocchio, you regret disobeying your father. Now I'm going to save you from here and give you back your money. Don't make the same mistake again. You're such a good fairy. Thank you very much. I promise I won't do it again. It was my mistake to enter a circus that mistreats animals in the first place. I'm so ashamed. The good fairy unlocked the door with her magic wand and took Pinocchio out of the circus. Pinocchio went on his way, singing as he headed to school.
啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。As he delightfully walked down the road, a sly fox and a crow appeared before him. What kind of a kid is this? He looks really foolish. He probably has money in his pocket too. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to school. Well, you don't have a notebook, pencil, and a school bag. How can you go to school? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but my money is in my pocket. I'm going to buy them with this. The fox and the crow looked at each other and started laughing mischievously. <laughs> This is the person we've been looking for. We can trick this dog easily. Oh, this is such a small amount. You can't buy all of them with this. But I know a shop where everything is half the price. If you want, give us the money. We'll run and get all of them for you in a snap. Plus, you'll have some money left over too. Oh, really? That would be great. Thank you so much. You're such great friends. Okay, you sit under this tree and wait. We'll go and bring you what you need. Pinocchio gave all his money to the fox and crow, sat under the tree and waited. He waited, waited, and waited. After a long time, Pinocchio finally realized that he had been tricked. He was thinking sadly about what to do. Suddenly, the good fairy appeared before him again, fluttering her wings. Haven't you gone to school yet? Why are you here? I hope you don't forget the last time. Please tell me the truth. Ashamed of having his money stolen, Pinocchio lied again. Uh, I dropped my money out of my pocket. Pinocchio. Whose nose suddenly started growing was in shock again. Oh, whoa! I told you to tell me the truth, Pinocchio. If you lie, your nose will get even longer this time. Pinocchio apologized and told the good fairy the whole truth. Once again, his nose turned back to normal. Thank you very much. But I still don't have any money to buy a notebook, pencil, and a school bag. I'm so embarrassed. Since you've told me the truth, the money is in your pocket. But don't lose it again. As Pinocchio was walking and singing on his way. He suddenly came across the puppeteer from the circus. As soon as he saw Pinocchio, who ran away from the circus, he started to chase him. Come here, you little naughty puppet! Pinocchio, while escaping with fear, tripped on a stone and fell straight into the sea. Oh! Oh! oh, oh help! 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 But because he was made out of wood, he didn't sink. As he moved his hands and feet in order to not sink, he realized that he was swimming. He liked it very much, so he swam, swam, and swam. But that day, the sea was very wavy. The waves dragged him very far. He was so far out in the sea that he was sleepy from exhaustion, and since he didn't sink, he comfortably fell asleep on top of the water. When he woke up, he found himself in a dark place. Hey, what's happening? Where am I? What is this place? Ew! It smells awful. As his eyes got used to the dark, he realized that he was now in the stomach of a large whale. It turns out that a big whale had swallowed him. Geppetto was worried sick about Pinocchio, who still hadn't come back home. He went out to search for him. He asked everyone he came across. Have you seen a small wooden boy pass by? 
he came all the way to the seashore and asked the fisherman. About an hour ago, a kid fell into the sea around here. He may be your son. Please give me a boat. I'm going to go out to the sea. I need to find him. The fisherman gave him a small boat. Geppetto got in the boat and sailed out to the sea. Pinocchio, my son. Pinocchio, where are you? The small boat couldn't fight the waves, and when it capsized and flipped over, Geppetto fell into the sea. The whale that had swallowed Pinocchio also swallowed Geppetto. He also didn't understand where he was in the pitch darkness. But Pinocchio saw him and started crying. <laughs> father! Father! You found me! I was so scared! <laughs> Pinocchio! My son! My son! Forgive me, father! I will never disobey you again! <laughs> okay, Pinocchio. We'll talk about this at home. Now let's search for a way to get out of here. Father, I'm going to try something. I hope we succeed. Good fairy! Good fairy! Can you hear me? The waves carried his voice all the way to the good fairy's ears. My God! This is Pinocchio's voice! The fairy flew towards his voice and appeared inside the whale's stomach where they were. Pinocchio, you are truly regretful and I will help you one last time. When she touched them with her magic wand, they found themselves at the shore. After that day, Pinocchio became a very smart kid. He always listened to his father. He was going to school and helping his father just like the old days. The good fairy tested Pinocchio from time to time. She knew that Pinocchio did not lie anymore and that he always listened to his father. She said, now is the perfect time. And one night, she turned Pinocchio into a real child while he was sleeping. The next day, when Pinocchio woke up, he felt a little strange. His heart was beating and he felt blood flowing throughout his body. He was no longer made of wood, but was a real child. He ran straight to his father. Father! Father! Look how much I've changed! <laughs> my God! My prayers have been answered. I now have a real son. After that day, they lived happily ever after. Pinocchio was now a child to be proud of. Once upon a time, there was a five-year-old orphaned girl named Heidi. She was a very beautiful little girl with dark brown eyes, short black hair and rosy cheeks. Heidi was brought up by her aunt Dieter who lived in Switzerland. One day, Heidi's life was turned upside down when her aunt found a job in another city. Aunt Dieter, who couldn't bring Heidi along with her. We're going to the Alps to your grandfather's, my dear. You'll stay with him for some time, and I'll come and get you when my work is done. This is for your own good, you understand, right? Yes, I do. You know what's best for me, Auntie. I'll bring my dolls with me and we'll wait for you. I'm also looking forward to meeting my grandfather. I can't wait! After a very long trip, they finally arrived at her grandfather's cottage. Grandpa Adolf lived there with his dog Joseph. Everyone knew him as a moody and a difficult man. But he was actually very soft-hearted. Aunt Dieter explained to him the situation and left Heidi there. Heidi and her grandpa loved each other from the moment they met. The little girl's antics brought life to that cottage. Grandpa Adolf got used to his new life with Heidi and couldn't think of a life without her. He no longer walked with a frowned face. Where have you been, Heidi? I feel reborn having you here with me. 
I love you, my dear grandchild. Me too, Grandpa. I really love you, and I also love it around here. Sadly, I have no friends. There's a boy named Peter. He lives with his blind grandmother in a cottage near ours. Tomorrow I will introduce you. What do you say? Oh, that's wonderful! Hooray! Peter was a boy who was also a goat herder in his spare time after school. Peter, let me introduce you to my granddaughter, Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Hello, Peter. Go on. Go and play together, okay? After that day, they became very good friends. Heidi and Peter always took the goats grazing every day. She would climb up steep slopes, much like goats did, and she ran barefooted. Peter, run! One of the kids is running away from the herd. Let's catch it. Don't worry. It'll come back. Phew. Got scared there for a bit. Okay then, let me gather some flowers. I'll give them to your grandmother when we get back. I hope she gives me some fresh goat milk in return. Peter taught Heidi how to milk the goats. They also named the goats one by one. Heidi even cooked soup at home and brought fresh baked bread to Grandma. Her joy and optimism had infected everyone. After a few years, Aunt Dita came back to get Heidi. She was going to take her to a rich family that lived in Frankfurt so that she could get an education and could have a better life. I can't give Heidi up. What will I do without her? Please don't take me, Auntie. I don't want to be apart from Grandpa. I don't want to leave. I'm very happy here. You're going to live with a very rich family, Heidi. You'll live in a huge house and get an education in a very good school. I don't care about those things. My dear grandchild, you know how much I love you and how much I will miss you. But I think your aunt Deet is right. It will be a better life for you. Listen to what I have to say. The family with whom you'll be staying has a daughter your age. You two can become friends. Clara is not able to walk and she has no friends. She needs a friend just like you. Come on, you'll see. You'll be much happier there. Grandpa Adolf and Heidi were both in tears. After a long trip, they arrived in Frankfurt. They arrived at a huge house and the housekeeper, Mrs. Rottenmeier, met them at the door. Welcome, I'm Ms. Rottenmeier. And I'm Clara. Welcome, Heidi. Hello, nice to meet you. Heidi, it's time for me to go. Take care of yourself, my dear. I'm pretty sure you will get along very well with Clara. Make sure you listen to what Ms. Rottenmeier says. I love you, my dear niece. That was when Ms. Rottenmeier's nightmare started. She always frowned and never smiled because she was a disciplinarian and a housekeeper. Okay, the meeting ceremony is over. Remove those dirty things at once and take a shower. I'll bring you some clean attire. Okay, Mrs. Rottenmeier, as you wish. You can come to my room after you shower, Heidi. We can play together. <gasps> oh, great. I'll clean up quickly and come then. Clara lived in the big house with her father Grandmother, the housekeeper, Miss Rottenmeier, and the other servants. Most of the time, she would stay in her room and never draw the curtains or open the windows. Heidi was shocked when she entered Clara's room. She immediately drew the curtains to let the light in through the windows. All of a sudden, the room was full of daylight. Clara, look how bright it is now. Sunshine will always help you feel much better. As time passed, Heidi got used to her new place and once again, she had made everyone fall in love with her. Every day, Heidi and Clara would play with her toys and then study. Miss Rottenmeier made it her goal to straighten up Heidi and turn her into a disciplined girl. 
Listen to me. You better be a good girl. Do not run or wander around. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rottenmeier. Heidi tried to follow all the rules of the house, but she was having a great time with Clara. Nonetheless, she still missed the Alps, her grandfather and Peter. She would always dream of running in the countryside with the goats. One morning, Heidi couldn't get out of bed. Clara's grandma went to check on her right away. Please, Grandma, send me back home. That cheerful girl that everyone knew and loved had disappeared, and in her place was a sick and quiet Heidi who had also lost her appetite. Grandma felt bad for her, so she called in their doctor. The doctor said that she was nostalgic, and the only cure was for her to be next to her loved ones in the mountains. So they decided to bring her back to her grandfather's. My life changed so much thanks to you, Heidi. I will miss you. I'm so happy, Clara. Please understand me. That's my real home. Come and visit me as soon as you can. Even after a very long and tiring trip, she was thrilled to see her grandfather again. She ran to him and hugged him joyously. I missed you so much, Grandpa, and I missed everything and everyone around here. I missed you too, my dear grandchild. We'll never be apart again. Look, Peter is here too. Hi, Peter. I'm back. Welcome back, Heidi. We've really missed you. Even the goats have. <laughs> Every day when they climbed the slopes, she would tell Peter about the mansion and the good times she spent there. After Heidi's return, Peter was back to his happy days. I have a new friend. Her name is Clara, but I will miss her a lot. Maybe one day she can come and visit. Clara had gotten permission to come to the Alps and stay with her. Heidi, Heidi. Look, I'm here! I can't believe you're finally here! Welcome, Clara! We'll have a great time! The two friends chatted until the late hours of the night. The next morning, after a wonderful breakfast, Heidi and Clara went out to the countryside and met with Peter. Clara kept them company while they were grazing the goats. It was a very different experience for her, but she was happy. But on the other hand, she was upset as she watched Heidi and Peter run and tumble. I wonder if I'll be able to run like her one day. I have no idea what that must feel like. Days passed. Clara regained her health by spending time outdoors in nature. Her cheeks were rosy. With the help of Grandpa Adolf and Heidi, she even started to get up from her wheelchair little by little. Bravo, Clara! You can do it. I'm, I'm, I'm so scared. What if I fall? We're here, right next to you. You don't have to be afraid. One day, as Clara watched Heidi and Peter gather the goats. She saw a cow running towards her. Help! Help! Frightened, she jumped out of her wheelchair and took a few steps. She was walking. A miracle had occurred. Actually, the cow was running towards the barn, but had caused Clara to walk. Peter and Heidi were shocked and didn't know what to do when they saw her. They ran to her and hugged her. You did it, Clara! You did it! After that day, she took a few more steps every day. One step, two steps, until she was able to walk. It was now time for Clara to go back home. Her father and grandmother had come to take her. Clara waited for them in her wheelchair. When she saw them, she got up, ran, and hugged them as they entered the cottage. She wanted to surprise them. They all sat together and talked about the days that Clara had spent in the Alps. Clara reminisced about the incident with the cow. 
Clara, her father and grandmother stayed a few more days and then returned to Frankfurt. Everyone was back in their own home, Heidi in the Alps and Clara in Frankfurt. They continued their friendship through letters. Clara wrote to Heidi that she would come back to the Alps in springtime so they could run together and milk the goats. Finally, snow began to fall and winter had arrived. Throughout that winter, Peter and Heidi went sledding. From time to time, they would chat and study by the fireplace at night. Heidi's grandfather would fall asleep happily by the fireplace knowing that Heidi would be by his side. Heidi, her grandpa and all her loved ones lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a faraway country, there lived two brothers, Ali Baba and Kasim. Ali Baba, a poor woodcutter, was a kind and honest man. Meanwhile, Kasim, the older brother, was a jealous and greedy man with an evil heart. One day, as Ali Baba was cutting and collecting logs in the forest, he saw a large group of horsemen coming towards him. Trembling with fear, he climbed up a tree. Even his donkey got so frightened that the poor thing hid behind the bushes. Good heavens! One, two, three, Forty of them! I guess these are the infamous forty thieves who steal gold and jewels from others. I had better stay up here until they are gone. Ali Baba curiously started to watch the forty thieves. The leader of the thieves got off of his horse in front of a rock and shouted. Open sesame! With a loud crashing sound, a big rock that served as a door opened up and the men entered the cave. I had better not climb down the tree, I'll just wait here. They all had saddlebags. They probably keep the stolen goods inside the cave. Oh God, help me. Frightened and bewildered, Ali Baba didn't move a muscle and remained silent. After a while, the huge rock reopened and the thieves came out. Close sesame! The thieves left, riding their horses again. Though Ali Baba was afraid, he was extremely curious. He climbed down the tree, walked to the entrance of the cave, only after he was certain that the thieves were gone. He said the magic words. Open sesame! The cave's door opened with a rumbling sound. Wow! It opened when I said the magic words too! Ali Baba entered the cave a little hesitant. It was dark inside. A narrow passage led to the depth of the cave. After walking for a few minutes, he reached an open space. This was where the thieves kept all their treasure. Ali Baba was amazed by what he saw. He couldn't believe his eyes. All the gold, jewels and coins the thieves had stolen were piled up. He was so astonished. Gosh, this is where they keep the stolen goods. What a big treasure. God knows from where and whom they stole all this. Whatever, I'm taking a sack full of this and leave before the thieves come back. Open sesame! He got on his donkey and rode back home. When he got home, he told his wife everything. 
she rejoiced immensely at their great fortune, but was also very nervous. Ali, these gold coins are not ours. I think we should bury them. We'll figure out what to do with them later. You're right, I guess. But I wonder how much gold we have here. So do I. Should we count it? Counting piece by piece is no good. Ask my brother Kasim to lend us his scale. We'll weigh them and then hide them. The next day, Ali Baba's wife went to Kasim's place to borrow the scales. Good morning. Can I borrow your scales? Kasim's wife was a very curious woman, so before handing the scale to Ali Baba's wife, she placed chewing gum underneath the scale pans. She wanted to know what they were going to weigh. When Ali Baba's wife returned home, she handed the scales to Ali Baba and they started to weigh the gold. And then they buried them in the garden as they had agreed. The next day, they returned the scales without noticing that a golden coin was stuck to the gum underneath the pan. Both Kasim and his wife were surprised when they found the gold coin. Good heavens! Where did my brother find these gold coins? I have no clue. I thought they would weigh flour or something else, but they were weighing gold. I have to find out. I'll get the truth out of him. Since he was a greedy man, he rushed to Ali Baba's house to find out where he had gotten the gold coins. Hi, Ali. Something weird happened. I found a gold coin stuck to one of the scale pans. You are a poor woodcutter. Where did that gold coin come from? Ali Baba did not want to answer at first. But since he couldn't lie, he told his brother everything. Knowing how greedy his brother was, he warned him in advance. Don't you dare go there. Those gold coins are not ours. The thieves could kill us if they found out. All right, all right. You're such a coward. That's why you are and you'll always be a poor woodcutter. <laughs> Since Kasim loved money and gold so much, he ignored his brother's warning. He got two donkeys and rushed to the cave Ali Baba told him about. Open, Sesimi! The door immediately opened. He was so mesmerized by all the gold before him that he started rolling on the heaps of gold. Hooray! I am rich! I am rich! Hooray! I am rich! He loaded the crates with gold and walked to the exit. But once there, he couldn't remember the magic words. What am I going to do now? Was it rice? Open rice. No, no, wheat it must be. Open wheat. Could it be potato by any chance? Open potato! I got it this time! Open tomato! Oh no! It won't open! What was it? Kasim tried his hardest to remember the magic word when suddenly the door opened. The thieves were back! They caught Kasim red handed. Who are you? What are you doing in our cave? How did you get in? My name is Kasim. I am Ali Baba's older brother. He told me about your cave and sent me to get more gold. Please forgive me. I am innocent. Go get Ali Baba instead. Despite what he said, the leader of the thieves tied Kasim with a rope. Now, tell me where I can find this Ali Baba. Scared out of his mind, he did as he was told. The leader of the thieves didn't want anybody to know about their secret cave, so he wanted to find Ali Baba to imprison him in the cave. Kasim didn't return that day, so his wife was concerned. She went to Ali Baba's house and told him that Kasim hadn't come back. She was very sad. Ali Baba suspected what might have happened. 
Right before leaving, he noticed there was a cross painted on his door. What is this sign? Hmm, I think I know what it is. I'll be right back. Being a clever woman, Alibaba's wife understood that the thieves had marked their house. So she came up with a plan. She painted a cross sign on every door in the neighborhood in order to confuse the thieves. At midnight, when the thieves came to the neighborhood to get Alibaba, they saw that every single door was marked with a cross. They couldn't tell which was Alibaba's place. All the doors are marked. We can't find Alibaba. We have to get back. The next day, the leader of the thieves found out exactly where Alibaba lived. He hid his gang of thieves in 40 barrels and filled the 41st barrel with oil. He knocked on Alibaba's door. Good evening. I'm an oil merchant. I come from very far. Can you let me spend the night here? In return for your kindness, I'll give you a barrel of oil. Being the kind-hearted man Alibaba was, he wanted to help, so he let him in. Sure, come on in. We were about to have supper. You are welcome to join us. They sat at the table. While Alibaba and the leader of the thieves were eating, Alibaba's clever wife grew suspicious of the man. She went down to the cellar and checked the barrels. Are you in there? Yeah, is it time? Shall we come out? Not yet. Wait for my instructions. Alibaba's wife realized what was going on and rushed to the kitchen. She boiled some oil in a pot and poured it onto one of the barrels. The thief that was hidden in the barrel screamed in pain when he got burned and ran out of the house. This alerted the other thieves who also left the house upon hearing the screams. Only the leader of the thieves remained, but he was also scared now and directly gave the order. Get out of the barrels now! It's time! To his surprise, he saw Alibaba's wife holding a scoop full of boiling oil standing in his way. To avoid the same fate of his gang as he tried to escape, Alibaba and his son caught him and tied him with a rope, and they turned him into the authorities. Now it was time to save his brother Kasim. Alibaba rushed to the cave. Open sesame! Kasim was inexplicably happy to see his brother. Thank goodness! I no longer care about gold or coins anymore. I was scared to death. Get me out of this place, Alibaba, please. I told you you should not covet so much of worldly goods. It may cause you a lot of trouble. Thanks to Alibaba, the thieves never returned to that country. The gold coins were distributed equally to all the residents. Their country was blessed with abundance. Alibaba and Kasim lived happily and peacefully with their families. Once upon a time, in a faraway country, a mother duck sat on her nest, patiently waiting for her six eggs to hatch. One day, she noticed that one of the eggs was bigger than the others. I'm pretty sure that the ducklings that come out of this egg will be the most beautiful ducklings that anyone has ever seen. Quacking. They all hatched but one. There was no movement in the big egg. I guess it didn't get warmed enough. Now I'm gonna sit on it again to see if it hatches. The ducklings sat beside their mother as she sat on the nest warming the big egg. Finally, the egg hatched. Everyone was curiously watching it. They were surprised at what they saw, 
a grey-coloured ugly duckling which looked nothing like his siblings. They were all staring at him. Oh my, this duckling doesn't look like the others. The rest of my ducklings are so cute. Why is he so different? Mother Duck was very sad. She consoled herself hoping that one day he might look like his siblings. But at the same time, she told herself that no matter what, he was her duckling too. Days passed and the ugly duckling was still the same. When they went for walks with their mother and wandered around, his siblings always left him behind. What an ugly duckling you are! You don't look like us! Go away! We can't even play with you! We don't like you! We don't want you hanging out with us! The ugly duckling was really upset. He always walked with his head down looking sad. One day, he went to the lake and as he cried, he talked to himself. My mother is very sad and my siblings don't even want me. Why am I so ugly? I'm so lonely. Nobody loves me. As he looked into the water, he saw his reflection. My siblings are right. I'm really a strange looking duck. My mother hasn't even kissed me once. I can't live with them anymore. So, he decided to leave his family and went to the forest to start a new life by himself. He walked for a long time and went very far. From time to time, he would stop to rest under a tree. If he found a body of water, he would swim to continue on his journey. Days and months passed and the weather got colder. The ugly duckling was shivering and couldn't even find a decent meal. It also started snowing so much that the whole forest was now all white. He could barely walk. Luckily, that's when he spotted a farm. Excited, he went inside the coop. But the hens didn't want him either. What kind of duck are you? Get out of our coop, now! He spotted a dog house in the farm. When he tried to go in, a huge dog confronted him. Hey, where do you think you're going? This isn't your house. Who said that we are friends? This time, the poor ugly duckling wanted to go inside the barn. We sure don't want to see an ugly duckling like you among us. Your face is so ugly that we might stop producing milk altogether. Get out! At that time, the owner of the farm was looking out the window. She felt sorry for the ugly duckling shivering and running from place to place seeking shelter. The lady dried him and wrapped him up with a clean towel and brought him inside the house. She then placed him next to the fireplace so he could warm up. Thank you for taking me in, ma'am. You warm up now, duckling. Let me bring some food for you. The lady also had a house cat. He was staring at the ugly duckling from afar. The cat got very jealous because his owner was now taking care of the duckling. While the ugly duckling was trying to warm up by the fireplace, the cat got close to him to taunt and scratch him. The poor ugly duckling had to endure the cat's taunting a few days. He just wanted to rest and be able to eat something to regain his strength. After some time, the ugly duckling decided to leave. Thank you for having me as your guest, ma'am, but I need to go now. I do not wish to impose on you or cause any trouble. The ugly duckling started his journey again. By then, the snow had melted and spring had come. 
On his way, he came across a little lake. He jumped in, and as he happily swam, he saw his reflection in the water. Uh oh, who's this? This is not me. Or could it be? Last time I looked in the winter, I was an ugly-faced duckling. He flapped and flapped his wings. And when he saw his huge shadow in the water, he shouted joyously, "Good heavens! How much I've grown and how handsome I've become! I wonder how would my mother and siblings treat me if they saw me now?" Suddenly, two swans that looked like him swam towards him. Hi, welcome to our lake. We're swans just like you. Are you lost? You can join us if you'd like. You're one of us. At last, the ugly duckling knew the truth. It turns out that his egg had accidentally rolled over to his mother's nest, so he decided to stay with his own kind. He was very happy. He swam and swam in the calm waters of the lake, admiring his own beauty. However, no matter how happy he was, the ugly duckling couldn't forget his mother. As time passed by, he missed his mother and started thinking that he should have never left. I was a swan egg that accidentally got mixed with my mother's duck's eggs. My mother never separated me from the others and kept me warm so that I could hatch like my siblings. <sighs> I owe her my life. The ugly duckling told the story to his swan friends. He thanked them for everything, said goodbye. And headed back to the farm where he was born. When he arrived, he ran to his mother and siblings. <laughs> Don't you recognize me? I'm the ugly duckling. Actually, I'm a swan. I turned into a handsome swan. How do I look? His mother was shocked, but happy to see her son again. Welcome back home. I was so worried about you, and I'm so sorry for all the pain we caused you, my son. His siblings were so ashamed. We judged you based on your appearance. Can you forgive us? We broke your heart. We will never make such a mistake. Come on, let's swim together like the good old days. They all jumped into the water joyfully. They swam in tandem with Mother Duck at the front, followed by her five ducklings, and in the back the beautiful white swan, the ugly duckling. Swimming all together, they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a poor widowed woman that lived in a village. This woman had a son named Jack. Jack was a very lazy boy. And he would never help his mother around the house. He didn't work either to make some money. Although he was a very clever boy, he was useless. Jack, wake up! You need to go to the market and sell the last cow we have left. Had never worked. Their only livelihood was selling all the cows they owned after his father passed away. I'm sorry, Milky Girl, but we have to sell you. We don't have anything left to eat. On his way to the marketplace, Jack came across a strange old woman. Good morning, young man. Where are you going? I'm going to the market to sell our cow. Don't bother going there. If you give me your cow, I will give you some of my magic beans in return. What do you say? Jack didn't like this offer, but the woman insisted. Look, these are magic beans. They will make you rich. Are you sure you don't want them? What? Rich? You said? Okay, I'll take them. Jack gave the cow to the old woman. He took the beans and headed back home. 
Mom! Mom! Look, I sold the cow, and now we have magic beans. I didn't even have to go to the marketplace. His poor mother almost fainted as she couldn't believe what she heard. What? How can you do this, Jack? I only asked you to do one thing, but you couldn't even do that. To your room now! Jack was very angry and upset. He threw the beans he had in his hand outside in the garden. Jack realised that he had been tricked. He was sad and starving. He couldn't even sleep. He regretted not doing what his mother told him to do. In the morning, the young man looked out the window and saw a plant that was growing rapidly. It was a giant beanstalk rising to the sky. Oh, what is this? It's a beanstalk. I guess the old woman was telling the truth. The beans were magical. We'll be rich! Rich! He immediately went out to the garden and started climbing the giant beanstalk. He kept on going up and up. It seemed the plant had no end. The beanstalk reached all the way to the clouds. Among the clouds, there was a huge house in front of him. Everything was so big that even the grass around the house looked like a tree next to Jack. Jack knocked on the door of the giant house. A giant woman opened the door. I'm very hungry and tired. Can you give me something to eat? The giant woman felt very sorry for the little boy. Come on in, but you need to eat and go before my husband arrives. He hates children and he can harm you. Jack immediately sat at the table. When he started eating, he suddenly heard a loud and scary voice. Fee fi fo fum. It smells like children in here. The smell makes me lose my appetite. I don't like it. Where is he? The giant woman's husband was a horrible looking giant. The ground trembled when he walked. Hurry, hide in the oven. He mustn't see you. Frightened, Jack hid in the oven right away. When the giant couldn't find Jack, he sat at the table to eat his dinner. Once he finished, he went to his room to take a nap. He kept on saying, I count, count, and I'm still not finished. Jack realised that the giant had left. When he was about to leave, he noticed a pouch full of gold on the table. So this is what he meant when he kept on saying I count. Count, I could have finished. Jack threw down the pouch that was more like a sack next to him and slid down the beanstalk. Mother! Look how much gold I've brought you. We're not poor anymore. Son, where did you get this? I hope you didn't do anything wrong. Jack convinced his mother and she was relieved. After some time, Jack couldn't stop thinking about the house at the top of the beanstalk. I wonder what would happen if I go up there again. I'm now experienced too. One day, he couldn't resist and climbed up the beanstalk again. He went to the giant's house. The giant's wife was a very nice woman, and she let him in again. Before long, the giant returned home. As soon as Jack heard his footsteps, he hid in the oven. 
The giant came in the house merrily, but his mood suddenly changed. He became angry and growled. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell children here again. You know I hate them. I know a child has come to our house today. Who is it? There is no smell other than the meal I'm cooking. And no one came today. Let me prepare your dinner. You must be hungry. The giant ate until he was completely full. Before he went to his room, he asked his wife to bring him his golden egg-laying chicken. His wife placed it on the table. I order you! Golden egg! Golden egg! The chicken would lay a golden egg each time. And the giant would put them in a basket. As soon as the giant went to his room, Jack, who had seen everything through the holes of the oven, grabbed the chicken and slid down the beanstalk back home. Time passed by. Jack and his mother were now very rich, but Jack still didn't want to work. He still couldn't stop thinking about the place. where the giant lived. He was interested in the gold. I will go one more time. This time I need to be more careful. He went up the beanstalk and entered the house without the giant's wife noticing. He hid in the oven again, but as soon as the giant entered the house... Fee, fi, fo, fum! Where is this child smell coming from? Ugh, I hate this smell! The giant's wife, who didn't see Jack, come in, told the giant. You shout like this every time you think you smell a child. You can search everywhere. You'll see that there's no one in the house besides us. The giant and his wife searched all over the house, but couldn't find Jack. Jack had hidden very well. After the giant had his meal, he called out to his wife. Can you bring me my golden harp? The harp that was on the table started playing such beautiful music that the giant, who was completely full, fell asleep soundly. Jack saw the giant fall asleep, grabbed the harp and started to run. But the magical harp started to scream. Help! Help! I'm being kidnapped! The giant heard the harp's shouts and immediately woke up. He ran after Jack chasing him. Jack was really scared. So you're the one who stole my gold and my chicken. I'm going to catch you and imprison you for life. Jack ran as fast as he could and he jumped and slid down the beanstalk. While still holding onto the harp. The giant, who couldn't slide because of his huge body, was extremely angry. As soon as Jack slid down and reached his garden, he cut the beanstalk that, along with the giant, flew very far away. So Jack was now free of the giant. He wondered about the place the giant lived, but was never going to be able to go there again. Jack barely saved his life. He ran straight to his mother. Mother, what I've done is not right. You warned me, but I didn't listen to you. From now on, I will never take anyone's belongings without asking them first. I have learned my lesson. No more laziness. I will find a job and work so that I can take care of you. Oh, my dear clever son. I'm so happy. After Jack's decision, the golden egg-laying chicken began laying normal eggs.
Jack learned to play the magical harp because it no longer played by itself. From that day on, Jack and his mother lived a happy and peaceful life. Jack was now earning his own money as a farmer. He took care of his mother. He had the best job because it was the job he knew how to do. Once upon a time, in a faraway forest lived a bear family. Father bear, mother bear and baby bear. The bear's family's favourite food was oatmeal. Mother bear would make it for breakfast almost every day. It was nice and warm. Mom, I'm hungry. Can you bring me my oatmeal? OK, dear, but it's really hot. You should wait a little before you eat it or you will burn your tongue. OK, Mom, then let's go for a walk so we can eat when we come back. The weather is beautiful anyway. What do you think? That's a good idea. Let's go for a walk. Mom, Dad, do you think we can also get some honey? Sure, why not? <laughs> OK, let's go then. Follow me. So the bear family went for a walk. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest lived a girl named Goldilocks that had long blonde curly hair. The little girl who lived with her parents loved the forest because the squirrels and rabbits were her friends. Her parents had warned her not to go far into the forest, so she played close to their house. Her golden curls bounced as she chased rabbits and butterflies. Her long curly hair was beautiful indeed. One day, Goldilocks asked her mother for permission to go into the forest. Mom. The weather's so nice today. Can I stroll around the forest for a little while? OK, dear. But don't go too far. Be sure you stay on the path. Oh, there are some wild strawberries on your way. Could you gather some for me? I'm going to make some jam for you. Mmm, delicious. I love them. With a basket in hand, Goldilocks started her journey following the path. As she pranced merrily, her curls bounced on her back. This was her favourite thing to do. When she came across the wild strawberries, she started eating some and putting some in her basket. What would happen if I go a little farther in the forest? If I don't go far, I won't be late. So little by little, Goldilocks went deeper and deeper into the forest. Her rabbit friends followed her, hopping among the flowers while she sang. Creeks and rivers, seas and sky. I wish I had wings so I could fly. Creeks and rivers and seas and sky. I wish I had wings so I could fly. La 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 After a while, she realized that she had gotten lost. She was worried and very frightened. Suddenly, she noticed a little cottage up ahead. Hmm, I wonder whose house this is. She walked up to the door and knocked. Anybody here? Yoo-hoo! Anyone? I don't think anyone is home. I'm lost and tired, so I should go in and rest a little. I'll ask for help when the owner gets home. Goldilocks pushed the door and it opened. So she went in. This is such a cute cottage and it smells delicious in here. I'm so hungry. 
The aroma was coming from the three plates of hot oatmeal on the table. The biggest plate belonged to Father Bear, the middle one belonged to Mother Bear, and the smallest one was Baby Bear's plate. Goldilocks took a spoonful from the biggest plate and burned her mouth. Ooh, this is so hot! Then she tried Mother Bear's oatmeal. Ooh, this is hot too! I can't eat it! Then she tried Baby Bear's oatmeal. It was warm and nice. Mmm, this is it. It's just right for me. She finished it in a large gulp. She then walked around the cottage and saw three chairs in a corner. There were three different sizes. When Goldilocks sat in the biggest one, she realised it was too hard and uncomfortable. Ugh, this is so hard and not comfy at all. She then tried Mother Bear's. This was medium sized and somewhat hard. No, this one's not for me either. She saw Baby Bear's chair, which was just right for her. As soon as she hopped in the chair, it broke and Goldilocks fell on the floor. Ouch, that hurt. I almost broke my leg. What kind of a chair is this anyway? She was so tired, she needed a place to rest. That's when she saw three beds in the next room. This is great, I'll just take a nap. Goldilocks climbed into the biggest bed. Oh, this is way too high. It feels like I'm way up in the sky. Let me try the medium sized bed. When she lay in this bed, it was far too soft that she sank in it. This is not comfortable either. How can anyone sleep in this bed? I really wonder who lives here. I hope they come soon so I can apologize for entering their house without permission and also for the damage I caused. The third bed belonged to Baby Bear. It was just right for Goldilocks. Oh, finally. This one is just right for me. I'll take a nap. I hope the house owners come before it gets dark and help me find my way back home. She fell asleep right away. At that moment, the bear family came back home. When Father Bear walked in, he was shocked when he saw the table. Someone put a spoon in my oatmeal! Uh-oh, mine also has a spoon in it. Oh no, someone ate all of mine. What am I going to eat now? I'm starving. <laughs> Don't be upset, dear. Your father and I will share ours with you. The little bear was just about to sit in his chair when he noticed that it was broken. He started crying. <laughs> Someone broke my chair! Where am I going to sit now? <laughs> Father Bear knew that there was something strange going on. This is not right. I wonder who's been in our house. Let's check the room too. They all went into the room and saw Goldilocks sleeping in Baby Bear's bed. Oh, there's a girl sleeping in my bed! Mommy, Mommy, wake her up now! <laughs> Goldilocks heard the Baby Bear's cry and woke up immediately. Oh my, you are so beautiful! When Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her, she was so scared she jumped out of the bed and ran out through the door and into the forest. I guess she thought we were going to harm her. Look, she forgot her basket full of wild strawberries. Poor girl. Goldilocks ran so fast and as luck would have it, she found her way back home. 
She banged on the door, crying. Goldilocks' mother heard her voice and opened the door. Where have you been, Goldilocks? I was worried about you. What happened to you? Goldilocks told her mother everything that had happened. Mom, I'm so sorry. I will never disobey you again. Her mother kissed her and tried to calm her down. Goldilocks couldn't stop crying and apologizing. Don't worry, you're home and safe now. Oh no, I forgot to apologize to the bear family, but I was so scared. It was the first time that I came face to face with bears. Don't worry, sweetheart. I bet they know you ran because you were scared. From now on, don't you ever go far from the house again. All right, Mom, I promise. Once upon a time, there lived a king in a far away land. The king's youngest daughter was very beautiful. Her father loved her very much. On her birthday, he gave her a golden ball as a present. Thank you very much, father. I love it. This is strange, though. Last night I dreamed that a very handsome prince gave me the same ball as a present. <laughs> the king lovingly caressed his daughter's hair. Hopefully one day you will get married, my beautiful girl. Who knows, maybe you will marry the prince in your dream. The princess took the golden ball and went out to the palace garden to play. She was throwing the ball in the air. But she couldn't catch it. And the ball rolled down into a tall, grassy area near a pond. The princess could not find the ball and started crying. How careless of me! How could I have lost it? What am I going to tell father? Suddenly, she heard a sound. Rabbit! Rabbit! Please don't cry! I can't stand it when girls cry! Come here! What's that? Where's the sound coming from? A green frog appeared before her. The princess looked at it in amazement. She had never seen a talking frog. A talking frog? But how? I'm a very special frog! If you allow me, I would like to help you, my dear princess. I can go into the pond and get your golden ball. Oh, thank you. My father will surely give you whatever you want in return. Please bring it back to me. No, I don't want anything from the king. What I want is for us to be friends. Only when you agree to this, I will bring you the ball. Uh, how is that possible? You and me... How can we be friends? Well, we will eat together, sleep together, stroll in the garden together, play with your golden ball. Oh, and you will also sing for me. I have heard you, and you have a wonderful voice. The helpless princess had no choice but to accept his offer. Okay, whatever you want, as long as you bring me my golden ball. But I can only fool him somehow. A little frog can't make me do something I don't want to. The frog jumped into the water, got the golden ball and threw it to the princess. The princess caught it, turned around and started running towards the palace. She didn't want to wait for the frog. The frog stood there, staring as the princess ran. The next day, while the princess was having breakfast with her father, the frog came in hopping from one of the open doors and jumped onto the table. Good morning, your majesty. Good morning, my princess. I hope you're going to keep your promise, beautiful princess. I've come to have breakfast with you. This frog is talking. What's going on, dear? What promise is this frog talking about? Yes, father. He's a talking frog. I was also shocked when I saw him by the pond yesterday. The golden ball you had gifted me fell into the pond. This frog got it out for me. 
Indeed, your majesty. In return, the princess promised to be my friend. That is why I'm here. Please forgive me. Then you should keep your word, my dear. Immediately, another set of dishes was put on the table. And they had breakfast together. Ugh, disgusting. I feel sick. The princess felt hopeless as she didn't want to disobey her father. That evening, the frog jumped on the pillow next to her and they slept together. Of course, the princess couldn't sleep at all. She was trapped in a corner until morning because she didn't want to be near the frog. Days passed. The frog followed the princess wherever she went. The little frog also knew a lot of fairy tales. At night, he would tell tales to the princess. And during the day, while strolling in the garden, he would put the flowers he collected on the princess's hair. After some time, the princess got so used to the frog that she would worry if she didn't see him around. She started falling in love with him. One night, the frog said, Tonight's your turn to tell me a fairy tale and sing a lullaby. My mother used to sing me lullabies all the time. The princess took the frog in her hands and started singing a lullaby in her melodious voice. A couple of tears rolled down the frog's eyes. When the princess saw how sad her friend was, she gave him a kiss on the cheek. Suddenly, the frog turned into a handsome young man. The prince got up and told the princess who he really was and what had happened to him. A wicked witch turned me into a frog. The only way to break the curse was if a beautiful girl kissed me. Thanks to you, the curse has been broken. Princess, will you marry me? The princess was still in shock, trying to understand what had just happened. She then realized that he was the prince who had gifted her the golden ball in her dream. I can't believe it. Of course I will. Let's go tell my father. They immediately went to the king and told him what happened. The king was also shocked, but he was also very happy that his beautiful daughter was going to marry the prince of her dreams. The princess and the prince lived happily ever after. It was a very cold and snowy New Year's Eve. Everyone on the street was in a rush to get somewhere. Some to their families and some to their warm homes. They were all wearing thick coats with scarves and gloves to stay warm in the freezing weather. On the corner of a street there was a little girl. Her dress was tattered and she was not wearing a coat a scarf or gloves. In this bitter cold weather, the girl was shivering, taking little steps, trying to walk in the unsuitable slippers she had on. She was shy and somewhat thin, but still very beautiful. She carried a vending tray with a strap around her neck with many matchboxes in it. She was the match girl that always tried to sell matches on the street. On that freezing snowy night, while the little girl was struggling to walk, her slippers suddenly tore. She started crying and her tears blended with the snow. <laughs> what am I gonna do now? How am 
am I gonna manage walking barefoot in the snow now? Hopeless, she continued walking. She was now a barefooted match girl. She couldn't go home without having sold any matches. I have matches! Matches! Would you like to buy some? She sought shelter in a corner, sitting on the ground with her feet under her dress. Doesn't anyone want to buy matches? Her voice was barely audible, and she still hadn't sold a single matchbox. Dear God, please let me sell these. I need to bring money to buy soup for Mother and medicine for Grandma. The wind blew snow that covered her hair and got into her eyes. She was now freezing in that corner. I, I have some matches! There were only a few people passing by, because it was really late. The match girl continued to shout, but her voice was weak. Matches! I, I have some matches! Matches! Her frozen fingers started to hurt. If I could warm up a little bit, Maybe I can stay a little longer. I'll, I'll light a match to warm up. Her cold hands were not even able to hold the matchbox. She managed to light up a match. The small flame coming from the match was so warm that it felt really nice in her frozen fingers. She felt better having the warmth of that small flame. She closed her eyes and started dreaming. Now I'm in a warm room. I'm warming up my hands and feet next to a stove. I also have a nice thick shawl over my shoulders. The little flame coming from the match had made her dream. But when the flame from the match was put out, she was cold again. So she immediately lit another match. She thought that this was a good game to play. This time, she dreamed that it was a nice spring day and she was lying over daisies and making a crown out of them. The sun was so bright in the sky warming her. Let me gather some more to take home. When she saw herself gathering daisies, the match was out again. She then lit another one. And one more, and one more. There was no limit to beautiful dreams. And now I see a wonderful dinner table in front of me with so many different types of food. Oh, I'm so hungry. First I'll have some soup, some chicken too, and chocolate. Oh, and there's some bread too. She was both dreaming and pretending as if she was eating the food. She had lit so many matches and the snow had finally stopped falling. The stars in the sky shone brightly. She looked up and a shooting star crossed over the sky. So she made a wish as her grandmother had told her 
If you ever see a shooting star, your wish will come true. Dear God, may all my wishes come true. Snuggled well in the corner, she fell asleep. But actually, her body had froze. The match girl opened her eyes in a warm and soft bed. The stove was burning. Good morning, little girl. How are you? A sweet old lady was looking at her from across. So she straightened up and sat in the bed. Good morning. Am I dreaming? Is this real? Who are you? Where am I? I saw you around the corner last night when I was driving home. A woman was crying next to you. So I went up to her and she told me she was your mother. Then we came together to my house. My mother? Oh, I guess she got worried and came looking for me since it was very late. We brought you here to my house. Your little body had frozen. I had to call a doctor in. Thank goodness I was not too late. Thank you so much, madam. But where's my mother? I have a wonderful surprise for you. Your mother and grandmother will be here in a little while. Oh my, I'm so happy. Me too, little girl. My house is so big and I'm really lonely. I talked it over with your mother. You will live with me from now on. Your mother will help me with the housework and your grandmother and I will be friends and spend some time together. Grandma was right. The wishes we make when we see a shooting star do come true. You're a very good girl. Last night you struggled and went through a difficult time in order to bring some money home. You didn't give up. People should persevere in the face of difficulties and always be hopeful. Grandma always says that life is full of surprises. Of course. You will start school right away. You deserve to be happy. I guess there are still very nice people in this world. After that day, the match girl was never ever cold and lived a happy life. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, lived the Stahlbaum family. Their daughter was named Clara and their son was Fritz. On New Year's Eve, Clara was very excited, so she couldn't fall asleep. She was eagerly waiting for the next day to arrive. Time was passing by so slowly. Oh God, please hear my prayers. Let it snow tomorrow night and let me get a very nice New Year's gift. Finally, New Year's came. They decorated the entire house and of course the pine tree in the living room. When Clara woke up in the morning, she couldn't believe her eyes. Her prayers had been answered as she was sleeping. It had snowed all night long. Everywhere was covered in snow. Both brother and sister were watching it snow from the window and waiting for their uncle to arrive. At last, Uncle Drosselmeyer was seen at the beginning of the road. You could tell even from far away that the big bag in his hand was full of gifts. He's coming! He's coming, Mother! Uncle Drosselmeyer is coming! And he has a huge bag in his hand! I'm sure our presents are in the bag. Quick, open the door. It's cold outside. He must be freezing. The kids welcomed him with joy. Welcome, Uncle Drosselmeyer. Welcome, Uncle. Hello, kids. The old man sat down immediately by the fireplace to warm himself. 
Uncle, can you give me my gift now, please? I'm so excited, I can't wait anymore. Me too, me too. Come on, Uncle. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm opening them right away. Their uncle opened the gift bag and gave the large, beautiful box to Clara and the other one to Fritz. Clara, who excitedly opened the box, screamed with joy when she saw the Nutcracker soldier inside. present I've ever got. Thank you. I'm so glad you like it, Clara. At that time, Fritz, who was watching Clara, quickly opened his own present. A large black mouse, dressed as a pirate, came out of his box. But Fritz didn't like his gift at all. He wanted Clara's gift to be given to him. He angrily threw the mouse on the ground grabbed the nutcracker from Clara's hands and threw it against the wall. His eyes were full of jealousy. Fritz! I want a nutcracker too! I don't like this mouse at all! Why is Clara's gift better than mine? Don't say that, Fritz. Your gift is nice too. It's very kind of your uncle to have thought of you and bring you a gift. You're being rude acting like this. I don't care, I don't care. I don't want this ugly mouse. Clara, who went to the spot where the nutcracker fell, noticed that one of his arms had broken. My dear soldier, I was going to dance with you. What a shame. I didn't even get a chance to play with you yet. Don't be sad, Clara. I'll fix him right away. He'll be as good as new. Don't worry. Uncle Drosselmeyer immediately glued the nutcracker's arm and fixed him. Fritz, what you've done is not nice. I had many more soldiers. I was going to surprise you later, but you've now lost your chance. Both angry and sad at Fritz's behavior, his uncle hid the box full of soldiers in a cupboard. But, but uncle! Let this be a lesson to you. Ashamed of what he had done, Fritz knew there was nothing he could do. He hung his head in shame and went to his room. After midnight, it was their bedtime. As it was New Year's Eve, they were allowed to sleep so late, but the night was now over. Happy Everyone happy wished one year, another a happy new, new year and year, went Fred. to their rooms. Happy New Year! Clara laid in her bed with the nutcracker. As she was sound asleep, she heard some rattling noises downstairs. Curious, she went down to the living room. Downstairs, there was a battalion of mice, just like the pirate mouse that Fritz had gotten as a gift, wandering around and messing up the living room. Clara! Clara, where are you? Come downstairs! Clara knew that the pirate mice were looking for her, and she was very frightened. But, after a moment, she realized there was no need to be afraid of a little toy mouse. It's a little toy. What can it do to me? We can probably talk and sort things out. She left the nutcracker at the top of the staircase and went downstairs. And what did she see? The little toy mice were even taller than her. And not just the toys. All the furniture was also huge. Glancing around really fast, she realized right away what was going on. It turns out she had shrunk. She was teeny tiny. Uh, uh, uh. Oh my god, what's happening? Why am I so tiny? I must escape before these mice catch me. The mice kept getting closer to Clara. We're capturing you, Clara. You're going to come with us to Mice Town. Don't resist. We'll catch you sooner or later. Right then, all the toys in the living room came to life. Tanks, cannons, soldiers, baby dolls, and stuffed animals all headed towards the pirate mice. Clara found the only way was to go behind the gifts under the New Year's tree. Just like the other toys, the nutcracker that came to life jumped from the stairs and started fighting the pirate mice. He was so brave 
The soldiers that Uncle Drosselmeyer put in the cupboard also jumped down to help the nutcracker. The pirate mice were suddenly shocked of such a strong defence and started retreating. Run for your lives! We've been defeated! Help! Clara, Clara, you can come out now. The pirate mice have run away. We've won. Clara came out from behind the gift she was hiding of fear. Everyone was very happy because of this victory. I was so scared, Nutcracker. You saved me from those pirate mice. Thank you very much. The Nutcracker suddenly turned into a very handsome soldier and bowing before Clara, invited her to dance with him. Will you dance with me, Clara? Oh, with pleasure. They started dancing. And just at that moment, beautiful music spread across the living room. Small fairies were throwing flowers around. The flowers were magical, and Clara suddenly found herself wearing a beautiful ballerina outfit and ballet slippers. Clara had turned into a ballerina. I admire you, Clara. How wonderful you do ballet. <laughs> Thank you. My biggest dream is to be a ballerina one day. Do you think I can be one? I'm sure you're going to be a wonderful ballerina. Then the name of the melody playing right now will be called the Nutcracker Ballet. Whenever you hear it, think of me, Clara. All the other toys were watching them in awe. Clara did ballet with the Nutcracker for hours. Spinning round and round on one foot, it was as if she was flying in the living room. But suddenly, she heard a sound. Clara! Clara, wake up, dear. It's morning already. Hmm, so you've slept with the nutcracker. Good morning, mother. I wish you didn't wake me. I was having a wonderful dream. I was dancing nonstop with the nutcracker. I was a ballerina. Really? Well, you must be tired after all that dancing. <laughs> Come on, wash up. We're waiting for you for breakfast. She really took the nutcracker in her hands and started dancing with him. She still had the melody in her ear. It was as if the dream was real. My handsome nutcracker. Once upon a time, there was a country where everyone was very happy. All the young girls of the country admired the king and queen's handsome son. The young prince was tall, had green eyes and black hair, and was also kind-hearted. The king and queen had raised him very well. The prince had become a young man who was a skilled rider and a swordsman. He was an avid reader and an excellent piano player. But, since he was a perfectionist, he couldn't love or marry anyone. Mother, the girl I marry needs to be a real princess. She needs to be sensitive, polite, and have proper manners. She must be beautiful inside and out. She has to have a melodious voice, so she can accompany me while I play the piano. Indeed. She must also be someone who thinks of the interests of her country, who helps everyone and acts fairly. You're right, Mother. She should also love animals and protect them, too. Since there was no princess with these characteristics in their country, the young prince decided to seek his princess in other countries. The princess he met in the first country he visited was a very beautiful girl. But one day, as they strolled in the garden, they saw a little puppy sitting under the tree. The princess suddenly started screaming. Ah! 
Take this dirty animal and throw it out. I don't want to see it in my garden. Her voice was so harsh and scary that the guards rushed and followed her orders. No, this behavior is unacceptable. I cannot marry someone this cruel. He politely bid her farewell and headed to another country. After a long journey, he wanted to rest in the guest house of the palace before meeting the princess. Suddenly, a horrible voice woke him up, but he couldn't tell where it was coming from. Hey, servants! I'm telling you, where is my cake? You need to be quicker. Bring my cake now! My goodness, where's that sound coming from? He followed the sound and peeked from behind the door of the room. A princess, sitting at the head of the dining table that was filled with sweets and desserts, was yelling at the servants around her while she ate voraciously. What did I tell you? Why aren't you bringing the cake that I wanted? The one I ate is not good. Quick, bring me a new one and then get out. When the prince saw this scene, he left the palace before meeting the princess. He thought that he could never marry someone who mistreats those who serve them. He headed to the third country to try his luck for the last time. When he met the third princess, he really liked her. She's very beautiful, but I shouldn't decide right away. I need to get to know her better. Just as he had thought, after some time passed and he got to know her, he realized that this princess was also not the girl he was looking for. She would always brag about herself and talk incessantly. My father is a very powerful king. Even if they gave me the whole world, I wouldn't want more. I'm also a very beautiful princess. I want to sit in my throne and have everyone around me to be my tree. His mother saw how unhappy her son was and tried to comfort him. Don't be upset, my son. One day you're going to find the girl of your dreams. One night, in a terrible stormy weather, someone knocked on the palace's door. The butler who opened the door was very surprised to see such a beautiful girl in this storm. Hello, I'm the princess of the neighboring country and this is my servant. The wheel of our carriage broke. Can we be your guests and can we keep our horses safe until our carriage is repaired? They immediately reported to the king. Of course, the king agreed to have them as his guests given such severe weather conditions. The princess was soaked and was shivering. But even so, the queen liked the princess. Please sit by the fireplace. I'll get you some dry clothes. You should eat something and rest a little. I'm sure everything will be better when you wake up. The princess changed her clothes and went downstairs to have something to eat. The prince heard what had happened and wanted to meet the guests. It is unfortunate that you had to endure such circumstances. Please make yourself comfortable. You can stay here as long as you please. Thank you very much, dear prince. I do have a request. My horses should be well taken care of. They've been miserable in this weather. Oh, and my servant should sleep well. Poor thing. He tried so hard to fix the carriage. I wouldn't want him to get sick. Don't worry. Your request shall be granted. You should rest now. The prince, who really liked the princess, whispered in his mother's ear. Mother, could she be the princess we have been waiting for? I wonder if the things she has told us are true. She is as kind as she is beautiful. Perhaps, my son, but let's see if she's a real princess. We'll see tonight. The queen quickly devised a plan. And she had seven mattresses put on top of each other where the princess was to sleep in. And they put a pea on the bottom of the mattresses. Yes, your room is ready, princess. You can rest now. Thank you very much, your highness. Good night. In the morning, while having breakfast, the queen started a conversation with the princess. Good morning, princess. Did you sleep well? 
Although the bed seemed comfortable, it felt as if I had a huge rock under my back. Unfortunately, I couldn't sleep at all. Upon hearing this, the queen signaled to the prince in approval without the princess noticing. After breakfast, the prince and princess went for a stroll in the garden. The princess told him about her country and her family. She had wonderful plans for her country. While strolling the garden, they saw a kitten. The princess affectionately picked it up and put it in a safe place. Isn't this such a beautiful creature, my prince? When they entered the palace, the prince started playing the piano. The princess accompanied him. Her voice was so melodious that everyone in the palace listened with admiration. The prince, who had liked the princess from the moment he saw her, thought that, that he had found the princess of his dreams. After a couple of days, it was time for the princess to return to her country. My prince, thank you for everything. You've been a great host to me, my servant and my horses as well. But I must go back to my country. The young prince didn't want her to leave. He was sure that she was the girl he had been looking for, and so he shared with the queen and king that he was thinking of marrying her. Mother, father, I'm sure you are thinking the same. This girl is a real princess. She doesn't give orders and asks politely from her servants, and also thanks them. She loves all creatures. She's polite, good-hearted, and smart. I'm sure she's the one. Okay, son, whenever you like, we will go to her country and ask her father, the king, for his permission for marriage. The prince, who got an approval from the king and queen, asked the princess for her hand in marriage. Actually, the princess also liked the prince the moment she met him. Her love grew as they spent time together. So, when the prince proposed and gave her a ring, the princess happily accepted. The celebration lasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and after that day, the prince and the princess lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, Snow White and the Prince lived happily married. I just wanted to get rid of Snow White, but I got banished from the palace instead. I'll make her pay for this. Of course, my queen. She can't get away with this. Let me see what she's up to. It looks like she's taking a walk alone. And she's outside the palace. I tell you, this is my chance. The witch immediately drank some potion and... Ha 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 That's it! I'm coming for you, young lady. There you go. You are so cute. The old lady caught Snow White by surprise as she suddenly appeared before her. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Oh, darling, I'm coming from the market and these bags are really heavy. I live close by. Could you help me? Sure. Let me carry your bags. So they started walking together to the old lady's house. Here we are. Let me open the door. Come on in. Leave the bags there, will you? Do you live in this empty house? You shouldn't be concerned about that. <laughs> Nighty night, Snow White. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <coughs> After making her fall asleep, the witch took Snow White to her own castle. Then she started preparing a potion. Now I will prepare an amazing potion for our princess. 
What's this potion for, my queen? It turns people into hideous beings. Once Snow White drinks this potion, she will be the ugliest princess of all time. Oh my! I thought she'll give this potion to the poor girl! This glass is for Snow White. <laughs> And this one's for me, my favorite raspberry syrup. Mmm. I'll raise my glass to celebrate my victory once the princess becomes ugly. <laughs> and I'll happily watch you do that, my queen. Long live the queen, long live the queen! What, what happened to me? What, where am I? You're at the witch's house. She's the one who locked you down here. Oh, so that old lady was the witch? She's planning something terrible. She has a potion that will make you ugly. I can't believe it. How do you know this? She was speaking to her mirror while preparing the potion. I saw and heard everything. I can't drink that potion. Don't worry. I'll help you. I have a plan. So what are you going to do? What's the plan? Listen to me carefully. The squirrel went to the kitchen downstairs. The commotion! What's happening? The witch went downstairs to find out what was happening. Ugh! How did this happen? My pants! In the meantime, the squirrel sneaked into the room where the potion was. Princess! Princess! I got it! Now you can safely drink the potion she'll give you! Are you sure? Yes, don't worry! You'll be drinking a delicious raspberry syrup! Take these crayons and some mud with you and remember the plan, okay? Okay. As if I don't have better things to do? The witch grabbed the glass with the potion. Little did she know that the squirrel had swapped the glasses and it was the raspberry syrup instead. Well, well, it's time for our beautiful princess to get ugly. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Let me go, please. What do you want from me? Do as I say and you'll be back home in no time. Drink this syrup now, you'll feel better. And what if I don't? Then you'll stay here forever! Yes, that's a good girl. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? My queen, I'm afraid Snow White is still the most beautiful girl. <laughs> Do you mean Snow White? Who'll turn into the ugliest princess alive when the sun goes down? <laughs> My face! What have you done to my face? From now on, you'll be the ugliest princess in the world! Now you can go back to your palace. <laughs> You're an evil, cruel witch. Let's see if your beloved prince will still love you. <laughs> After Snow White left, the witch went into her room and stood before the mirror. 
Now it's time for me to drink my raspberry syrup and celebrate my victory. Let's see. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me now who is the fairest of them all. <laughs> well, mm, uh, it's no white, my queen. But uh, how could this be? On the other hand, my queen, if you must know, you are the ugliest being in the world. You impertinent mirror. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, no! For a second, I didn't even recognize you, Snow White. <laughs> but the witch wasn't as lucky as you. She'll be ugly forever. She deserves it, though. I'm so grateful for all your help, Squirrel. Thanks to you. We taught the witch a lesson. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Snow White. Snow White missed the seven dwarfs very much, so she decided to visit them one day. She got ready and headed out to the dwarfs' village. The witch that had drunk the potion of ugliness by mistake and became the ugliest being in the kingdom was furious at Snow White. She tricked me! It was her that was supposed to be ugly, not me! But this time, I will show her! Look, my queen! Snow White is going somewhere! And she looks happy! Is she singing? It appears so, my queen. If you wish, I can turn the volume up. I miss you so much, my beloved dwarfs. But we'll meet very soon. La 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 la. Oh, she's going to see the seven dwarfs. That's just great. Show me, what are the dwarfs up to? Happy and Sneezy are picking mushrooms in the forest. <laughs> Excellent! These two fools will bring Snow White right to me! Nighty night, dwarfs! <laughs> I'll just leave this note here. <laughs> Doc, who was working on the other side of the forest, finished his task and went to look out for his friends. Happy! Sneezy! Where are they? What's that? Meanwhile, Snow White was still on her way. There! I can see my friend's house! Oh, it's so exciting! Snow White, it's nice to see you! I miss you so much, my friend, so I decided to pay you a visit. How nice of you to come. Come on in. I need to tell you something. I'm afraid the witch has kidnapped Happy and Sneezy. She left a note. If you want to save your beloved dwarf, Snow White... How did this happen? We must save them! Where are the others? It's just you and me. The others are on the mountainside working in the mines. Come on, we don't have much time. Snow White and Doc headed to the witch's house. The witch watched them through her magic mirror and laughed wickedly. I'm waiting, Snow White. I still have a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Snow White and Doc ran into an injured crow. Why can't you fly, little crow? Poor thing, an ivy is wrapped around its foot. Let me see. Don't worry, we'll help you. There you go. Now you can fly again. Snow White and Doc kept on walking, but they realized that the crow was right behind them. Doc, look, the crow is following us. I wonder why. I guess it liked us. 
they eventually arrived at the witch's castle. Here we are. We need to be very quiet so the witch doesn't catch us. This castle doesn't feel safe at all. Who knows where that evil witch locked up our friends. We should hurry and find them. The door's locked. Let's try the windows. Look, this window lock is loose. There you go. Let's get in. They sneaked into the castle. The castle is as unpleasant as she is. Careful. They're not here. Let's try upstairs. The room is so dark. Oh, it's just a mirror. I got scared for a minute there. You are wasting your time. Your friends aren't here. The witch locked them in the cellar. It's the witch's magic mirror. Doc was a little suspicious of the mirror. Why are you helping us? Because I hate the witch, but unfortunately she's my owner. He might be telling the truth. Quick! The witch can show up any minute! Then Snow White and Doc went back downstairs and found the entrance to the cellar. This must be the entrance to the cellar. Let's open this up, quickly! It's stuck! <sighs> there you go! But, but there's no one here! Oh! Oh my! The witch! The mirror tricked us. I've been waiting for you. What took you so long? Please, don't! No! <laughs> when they opened their eyes, Snow White and Doc realized they were on a boat. Oof. What happened to us? Why are our hands tied? It's the witch. Have a nice cruise, my friends. <laughs> Where are our friends? What have you done to them? Don't worry. They'll be my servants. They'll work for me for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Let's remove this plug first. Hey, don't! No! Goodbye, princess. Now you'll be out of my life forever. <laughs> oh, the, the boat is filling up with water. The plug, it's right there. You should grab it. Oh, it, I, I can't reach it. It's the crow! Good job! We need to untie these ropes. You're a very clever crow. Snow White, use that bucket to empty out the rest of the water and I'll start rowing. When they finally reached the shore, they went back to the witch's castle to find their friends. Let's take a look at the backyard! There is a well here! Yes! There they are! Hurry! They found us! Watch out! The witch! Be careful! What's going on here? How did you two manage to escape? Looks like we're done here, my friends. Let's get going. Once upon a time, long ago, there lived a lumberjack with his children by the edge of a faraway forest. 
The son was named Hansel and the daughter was named Gretel. The lumberjack's wife, the children's mother, had died, so they were going through very hard times. As they were also a very poor family, they survived only on the herbs and fruits that they collected from the forest. The children never complained about the situation and always tried to support their father. One day there was a knock on the door and a woman holding a huge bottle of milk appeared before them. I've come from the neighbour forest. My house burned down and I have no place to stay. I've also brought a cow with me. If I give you this bottle of milk and the cow, could I oh. stay with you? The father and children happily accepted this offer. At least they were now going to have a cow that could give them milk every day. After some time, their father married this woman. Yet their impoverished life continued. One night, as the children went to bed, husband and wife started arguing. But Hansel was secretly listening to them. Look at us. How can we feed the kids like this? I'm helpless. I don't know what else to do. Well, I actually have an idea that could benefit us all. But I don't know if you'd accept. Tomorrow, let's take the kids to the forest and tell them that we're going to collect wood and we'll light a fire. Give each of them a loaf of bread and leave them there. Don't be ridiculous. I love my children. How could I abandon them? Don't worry. They're a lot older now. They can take care of themselves. When our situation gets better, we'll search for them. If not, all four of us will starve to death. Hansel was a very smart child. So when he heard his stepmother's plans, he secretly left the house to collect pebbles. His mother that had passed away taught him this. She had told him that the shining pebbles at night will show you the way. In the morning, their stepmother woke the children up. Hansel, Gretel, wake up. We're going to the forest. We need to collect wood for fire. The first thing Hansel did when he woke up was to put the pebble stones in his pocket. As they walked to the forest, he secretly dropped the pebble stones to the ground. They headed all the way into the depths of the forest. When they stopped to rest, their stepmother and father lit a fire, put some bread next to them and started to walk away. Children, you rest a little by the fire. Me and your father will collect some wood and come back. Their father was very sad, but helplessly he followed his wife towards the path home. He turned his head and looked at his children for the last time. I will get my kids back at the first opportunity. The children watched and watched their stepmother and father until they were out of sight. Realising that their stepmother and father would not be coming back, the tired children fell asleep by the fire. When they woke up, it was very late and the moon was glowing brightly. I'm so scared, brother. What are we going to do? I don't think anyone's coming to find us. Don't be scared, Gretel. The pebble stones I left in the moonlight shine brightly. We can follow them and go back home. The children walked all night long and finally they arrived at their father's home. The pebble stones had shown them the way. Their stepmother that opened the door stared in surprise. What were you doing in the forest till this hour? We looked all over for you and couldn't find you. I bet you were being mischievous and hiding somewhere, weren't you? Thus, pretending and fooling the kids. The father happily hugged his children. Thank heavens you've come back. My eyes are swollen from crying all night. But their stepmother wasn't giving up easily. Her only goal was to get rid of the children. She asked them how they had found their way back home and Gretel told her everything one by one. Now that she knew how they came back home, she locked them in their room that night. 
That night, Hansel oh. couldn't go out to collect pebble stones. The next day, they went to the forest again. This time, since Hansel didn't have pebble stones, while he was walking, he was dropping the breadcrumbs in his pocket onto the ground. The same thing happened, and the children waited by the fire once again. I'm so scared, Hansel. It's very dark again. Let's go back home. Don't worry. I couldn't collect pebble stones, but this time we'll follow the breadcrumbs that I dropped. But when they set off, there were no breadcrumbs. Because the birds had eaten all of them. But, but where's all the bread? They went in and out everywhere, but they couldn't find the way. No way! What are we going to do now, Hansel? Think of something, and I'm so cold. Okay, Gretel, don't worry. First, let's find somewhere to warm up. One way or another, we'll find the way back home. Both completely frightened and exhausted, they found a hollow tree and got inside to warm up. They fell asleep hugging one another. In the morning, they kept walking around the forest, not knowing where to go. Two days passed by. Whichever way the kids went, they just couldn't find the way. Later, they saw a bird on a tree branch. Oh, look! What a beautiful bird! It's as if it wants to say something to us. Do you think it'll show us the right way? Let's follow it! It was a big, magnificent blue bird. The children, forgetting how tired they were, started following the bird. They saw that the bird had landed on the windowsill of a house. Wow! What a beautiful house! It's as if the bird is calling us to come. Come on! What are we waiting for? Let's go! We might find something to eat! When they approached the house, they were completely baffled. It was a beautiful house made entirely of chocolate, cake and candy. The windows were made out of cream and the roof was covered in colourful candies. They started biting away at the house and tearing pieces off. I'm going to tear off a little from the window side, Gretel. Mmm, delicious! I'm curious about the candies hanging from the roof. You should taste the doorbell too. This way, they filled their bellies with cake, sweets, cream and chocolate. Hey, anyone there? Yoo-hoo, we're here. Helplessly, they decided to sit and wait by the door. A little while later, a sweet-faced, lovely woman holding a bag walked into the garden. Oh, it seems I have guests. Welcome! My bluebird gave me the news a few minutes ago, so I came as fast as I could. We're sorry. We've eaten a few things from your house without permission, but me and my sister have been really hungry for two days. It's okay. My house is very special. The parts you have eaten grow back right away. Come on, go inside. You must be cold. Also, if you don't have a home, you can stay with me. That night, she had them sleep in wonderful beds. And the next day, she prepared a delicious breakfast. Actually, this beautiful woman was an evil witch with treacherous plans. When she went to wake up the kids, Hansel and Gretel, who saw a horrifying witch in front of them, were screaming and wanted to escape from the room. But the witch captured Hansel and threw him in a cage and locked the door. She then threw Gretel into the kitchen. Ha 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 ha! You stupid kids! You fell for my house made of candy! Go on then! Cook the meals that you and your brother like! Get fat, so I can feel my belly more when I eat you. Go on and get started. Since both children were incredibly clever, in order to not get fat, they only ate enough to survive. 
Gretel threw away the food on her plate when the witch was not looking, and Hansel hid the food in his jacket and trouser pockets. Gretel, come here, let's see if you've gotten any fatter. The witch first picked up Gretel to check her weight. You're such a skinny girl. You think that by staying like this you'll manage to free yourself from me? The witch pulled Hansel from his jacket. As she was checking him from outside the bars, the food in his jacket and trousers fell out. The witch immediately realized what was going on. You thought you could trick me, huh? I changed my mind. I'm not going to wait until you get fat. I'm going to cook you both in the oven today. Let this be your punishment. Ha 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 ha. She was so furious that she kept banging herself into things while she was strangling around the house. Because the witch was actually blind. It was then that Gretel realized that the witch couldn't see. She was by the stove, both crying and also planning on how they can escape. Gretel, come here, quick! Take a look at the big oven in the kitchen. Tell me, is there enough wood inside? The fire was burning hot, but Gretel tricked the witch. The fire is about to go out, my lady. Then throw in more wood. Quick! That oven door is stuck. I can't open it. What a useless girl you are. Skinny and useless. Here, it's this simple. The witch then opened the oven door. The heat of the burning wood hit her face. What's going on? You said there was no fire. The witch stretched her hand out towards the oven to understand what was happening. Taking this opportunity, Gretel pushed the witch into the oven with all her might. When the old witch fell into the oven, she closed and locked the door. The witch's screams could be heard from all around. Help! Help! Gretel opened Hansel's cage and let him out. Both siblings hugged each other tightly. They were very happy. My dear sister, well done! We're now saved because of you! <laughs> Gretel, come on! Let's see if we can find something to use at home before we get out of here! They wandered around the house together. There was a door to a room that the witch never allowed to be opened. When they opened it, they saw a chest full of jewels. <laughs> Let's fill our pockets right away! We'll have jewels instead of food this time! They quickly got away from the house and entered the forest. It was as if all the paths were familiar. Finally, they saw their house from afar. Father! We're here! The father that opened the door happily hugged his children. He was so happy. Children, I have some news for you. Your stepmother got ill and passed away. I made a huge mistake by listening to her. Please forgive me. I've missed you so very much. I regret everything. We've missed you too, father. We missed our home and beds too. Now we can forget about everything and be together. They took the jewels out of their pockets and gave them to their father. Oh. Their father stared with surprise. What are these? We're no longer poor, we're rich! Father, we have so much to tell you! You have no idea what we've been through! That night they sat by the fire and chatted till morning. The bad days were left behind, so they all lived a happy and peaceful life. Once upon a time, in a little house in the forest, there lived three little pigs, Honky, Ponky and Minky. They lived with their mother. Uh. Honky was very lazy. Ponky was very carefree and easygoing. And Minky, the smallest one, was smart, forward-thinking and a brave pig. He behaved as if he was the father of the house. 
Whenever there was a problem, their mother would always resolve it with Minky. The others wouldn't even move a muscle. Despite the fact that these three brothers were so different, they really loved one another. In their spare time, after sleeping and eating, they always played hide-and-seek in the forest. Two, three, four, five. Honky and Ponky always napped in the spot in which they were hiding. And Minky would find them each time, wake them up and then tag them. Minky had no other option than to accept his brothers the way they were. I'm always it. It's not fair. I'm so tired of looking for you. <laughs> oh, let me sleep a little bit more. <laughs> He'll spend all day searching for me. <laughs> Children, don't go too far away whilst playing. You know that the forest is dangerous. It's full of hungry wolves. Honky and Ponky expected their mother to do everything for them. Minky, however, always helped their mother. One day, he took their mother aside. Mum, this can't go on like this any longer. We're the ones who always bring the wood from the forest. You get tired cooking for us every day. I think my brothers and I should leave and we should take care of ourselves. Don't be ridiculous, Minky. You're all my children. I'm used to it all. Of course, Mum. But my brothers should learn to take responsibility. It'll be good for them too. Huh? What do you say? I think you're right, Minky. Then let's talk to your brothers tomorrow and put this idea straight into action. I'd saved all of you a bit of money. I'll split it to three and give it to you all. Everyone should build his or own house. Let's see what happens. Even though Minky's brothers were shocked at their mother's idea, all three little pigs, bags in their hands, set off on the road the next day to start their new lives. They were very excited. They parted with their mother at the door. Mum, I'm so sorry I upset you by being so lazy all the time. See you. Mum, mm. I never listened to anything you told me. I upset you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. From now on, I'll remember everything you've told me. Goodbye. Mum, don't be sad that I'm leaving. After I finish my house, I'm going to come and get you. Take care. Their mother was very concerned that something bad could happen to them in the forest. Take care of yourself, kids. Let me know how you are. And please watch out for treacherous wolves. The three little pigs walked for a while and finally decided on a spot for their new houses. It was quite far away from their home. Minky especially wanted it to be like this. He didn't trust his brothers. He thought that they should really learn to take care of themselves and not run straight to their mother at the first problem they are faced with. It was first Honky that found a spot for his house. Because he was lazy, he was choosing the easiest option. I'll make my house from hay, and once I make my bed from hay too, I'll be nice and warm throughout the winter. I won't have to work so hard. I'll also have some money left because it's cheap and easy to build a house of hay. Punky was nearly the same. I'm going to make my house out of wood. I'll also paint it nicely. This is the best option. If I rent one room out, then I won't even have to work. I think it'll be easy to make a house out of wood. Guys, are you crazy? How can there be a house from hay and wood? You're both picking the easiest options again. If I were you, I would think about it again. You take care of yourself, Tiny. And he's telling us what to do. You short pig, you. <laughs> the three little pigs were building their houses close to one another. Hunky had built his house out of hay in one day. He had even started to fall asleep on his bed of hay. And Ponky built a scrappy house within a day with the wood that he had bought. Oh, even this house is too much for me. As long as I have a roof over my head, I don't care about anything else. Minky was going to make his house out of brick. First, he carried the brick. And then he dug a large base. Then, in the next couple days, he built a wonderful house with four rooms and a fireplace 
out of brick and cement. I'll carry water and wood for old people and take care of their gardens. I'll go to the market for them. This way I can be of use to everyone. And I'm sure they will give me a plate of food and an allowance. It wasn't long before the dangerous wolf in the forest got the smell of the three little pigs. First, he went to Hunky's door. Neighbour, my sweet neighbour, welcome. Can I come in so that we can meet? I live nearby. This must be the voice of the wolf that Mother warned us about. As far as I know, there aren't any neighbours around. I know who you are, you horrible wolf. I'm not going to open the door. The wolf got really angry. Get out of there quickly. My breath is incredibly strong. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. No, my house is strong. You cannot destroy it. The wolf took a step back, took a deep breath in, and then he huffed and puffed towards the house with all his might. The house of hay completely fell apart. Honky managed to escape and ran straight to Minky's house. Minky, the wolf came to my door and destroyed my house. And I ran to you. I think he's going to Ponky now. Quick, close the door. Oh no! Let's call him and let him know right away. Hello, Ponky. Get out of the house immediately. The wolf is coming towards you. Hello? Minky, is that you? Ah, uh, look at what you're fussing over. My house is solid. There's no way he can get in. Indeed, the wolf who hadn't managed to catch Honky was headed straight towards Ponky's house. Yoo-hoo! Anyone home? Little pig, I bought you a small gift from your little brother. Open the door, let me come inside and let's talk a little. He wouldn't have time to send me a gift from his sleep. Either way, my brothers called me to let me know that you were coming. You stupid wolf! I'm not opening the door. Now get out of here. So you're not opening. Okay then. My breath is incredibly strong. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Not wanting to leave empty handed, the treacherous wolf gave the house a couple of kicks. Then after huffing and puffing on the scrappy house, it fell apart. Pinky managed to escape and get to Minky's house. Quick, open the door, Minky. The wolf's going to catch me. Please hurry up. Minky took his second brother into the house too. The three of them were shaking with fear. The three brothers sat down and started thinking. I think it's your turn, Minky. He's coming here for sure. Yes, I think so too. We must find a way to free ourselves from this wolf once and for all. But how? The three pigs quickly made a plan. We've got to make a plan, guys. Good idea. And started to wait for the wolf. Come on. When the wolf arrived at Minky's house, he called out. I know that three of you are there. Come out nicely, or I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow this house down too. Come on, what are you waiting for? Break it down if you can. Turn around, go, and leave us alone. The furious wolf started kicking the door and the walls. There were three locks on the door, but the three pigs stared at each other with fear and hugged one another tightly as they watched the door. The wolf kicked, huffed, and puffed, but he couldn't destroy Minky's house. Suddenly, an idea popped into the wolf's head. He was going to enter the house through the chimney. He went onto the roof by placing a ladder against the house. He managed to squeeze himself into the chimney and let himself fall. The three pigs were waiting for this moment. Right away, they lit a fire in the fireplace and started to watch. Since the wolf hadn't seen smoke in the chimney before, he hadn't thought of a fire. Falling quickly and straight down the chimney, he burned himself from the fire. As fast as a jet, he went right back up the chimney in so much pain. Help! Help! I'm on fire! Help! 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 
<laughs> Finally, the wolf's time is over. He'll never come back. Now it's time to go get our mother. My house is pretty big, and there's a room for each of us. I've missed her very much, haven't you? Have I? I won't be lazy ever again. I'll sort out of the shopping from now on. I missed her too, and I will do the gardening from now on. I'm going to grow fruits and vegetables and help our mother. Yes, all of us must help Mum by doing some of the housework and make her comfortable. We can also help some of our neighbours too. Thus, Honky and Ponky changed a lot. Everyone started to look up to clever Minky. With this wonderful ending, they took their mother in with them, and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, lived a boy named Aladdin. His father passed away when he was very young, so he was in charge now of supporting his mother. He would help people in the market and try to earn some money to bring food home, because they were very poor. But Aladdin was kind-hearted, so everyone loved him very much. One day, on his way to the market, a well-dressed, evil-eyed man approached him. Hello, young man. I need to ask you for a favor. I dropped my ring into a small crevice just ahead. I can't get in. Can you go in and get it for me? Together, they walked toward the crevice where the man had pointed out. The hole was just big enough for Aladdin to enter. He barely went through the hole. Inside, there was a small gas lamp which lit a cave. It was full of gold, money, and jewels. The man called out from above. If you found my ring, you'll also see an old lamp there next to it. I want you to bring me both of them. Aladdin was shocked at the sight in the cave, so he got very suspicious that the man only wanted an old lamp and a ring, while the place was filled with money and jewelry. This doesn't make any sense, but okay, I'm coming out. When he came to the top of the hole, the evil-eyed man yelled at him. Hurry! Give me the lamp! No, I need to get out first. If you don't do as I say, I'll leave you in there. Give me the lamp! I said no. Let me get out first. The man got very angry and trapped Aladdin there. Aladdin didn't know what to do in the dark, so he took the lamp and put the ring on his finger. At that moment, green smoke came out and a genie appeared before him. Frightened, Aladdin hid right away. Don't be afraid, Aladdin. I will do you a favor. I will grant you whatever you want. But you only have three wishes. Please take me home. This was Aladdin's first wish. Suddenly, he found himself in his room. At that time, his mother, who was also in the room, asked, "Ooh, when did you come in?" Aladdin told his mother everything that had happened to him. I didn't have anything to eat today because of everything that happened. Do we have anything to eat, mother? I'm sorry, son, but we have nothing to eat since you didn't bring any money today. Desperately sitting in a corner, Aladdin wanted to spend time cleaning the lamp, which was very dirty. He took the lamp in his hands, and as he was rubbing it, all of a sudden the lamp genie came out of the lamp. Say what you wish of me. Oh my goodness! Who are you? I'm the lamp genie. You saved me from that sorcerer. So now your wish is my command. Say what you wish of me.
My mother and I are starving. We want a table full of food. Can you do this? Suddenly, a table full of different kinds of food appeared. Aladdin and his mother ate until they were completely satisfied. From that day on, thanks to the magic lamp, a very rich and happy life awaited them. And that's what really happened. Years passed by and Aladdin became a young man. He was at the marrying age. Mother, I would like to get married. My dear son, I'm so happy. You'll have the most beautiful girl in the country and I know just who that is. The Sultan has a beautiful daughter. Her name is Jasmine. What do you say? Aladdin immediately appeared before the Sultan with a small chest full of jewels and told him of his intention. Dear Sultan, with your permission, I would like to marry your daughter. It's not that easy. Will you be able to grant my requests? Whatever you ask, dear Sultan. Then listen to me well. You will bring hundred soldiers. These soldiers will protect my palace, but all of them should have solid gold hearts in their hands. Your wish is my command, dear Sultan. Aladdin went back home and took care of this with the help of the Lamp Genie. The next day, the Sultan saw in his garden a hundred soldiers carrying solid gold hearts in their hands. Well, since you managed this, I would also like you to build a magnificent palace for my daughter. Only then I will agree that you marry. Aladdin immediately called the Lamp Genie. He gladly did whatever Aladdin asked for because he owed his freedom to him. Say what you wish of me. I want a magnificent palace for the Sultan's daughter. The Lamp Genie clapped his hands twice and a big palace appeared next to their house. Since all of the Sultan's requests had been granted, he approved the marriage. They had a wedding ceremony that lasted 40 days and 40 nights. They soon moved into their palace and one day, a salesman was passing in front of the palace. Old lamps! Old lamps! I buy and sell! I can sell this old lamp to the salesman and get a new one. I think Aladdin will be very happy. The salesman, in fact, was the sorcerer Aladdin met when he was a child. He took the old lamp and gave a new one to Jasmine. The magic lamp was now his. In the evening when Aladdin returned home, he noticed that the palace was gone. He immediately figured out what had happened. He put on the magic ring and called the giant. Say what you wish of me, but you only have two wishes left. Take me to Jasmine. Hurry up! All of a sudden, he was in the palace. When he went upstairs and peeked into the open door, he saw Jasmine serving the sorcerer and preparing the table. Aladdin got upset and waited for Jasmine to come to the kitchen. When she entered the kitchen and saw Aladdin, she was surprised. Aladdin, what's going on? Shh, be quiet and wait. I will save you. Aladdin put the ring on his finger right away and the giant appeared before him. You only have one wish left. Yes, I know. This is my last wish from you. Freeze the sorcerer and turn him into a sculpture. All right, here you go. Suddenly, the sorcerer froze and turned into a sculpture. Aladdin had his lamp once again, so he called the lamp genie.
Say what you wish of me, but don't ever lose me again. Take us in our palace to our old place. Also send this evil man to a deserted island where he can't hurt anyone. The lamp genie clapped twice and the palace appeared next to their old house. Their mother was also with them. They told Jasmine everything. After that, Jasmine, Aladdin and his mother lived a very rich and happy life together. One day, Hansel and Gretel's father became very ill, so the children summoned a healer. The healer was a good woman who cured the sick using herbs she gathered. I boil the water with medicinal herbs, but it only helps lower the fever a little. So, he won't get better at all? Well, there is one medication. The golden fruit, but getting it is almost impossible. How come? Where is this impossible place? I know where it is. The challenging part is getting it from the owner. Tell us where it is and we'll bring it to you. This golden fruit only exists in the evil warlock's garden. It's very dangerous to get there. We don't mind that because we must do this for him. We'll go there and bring it. The healer realized the children wouldn't give up, so she shared a little secret. It is said that this warlock only fears one thing. What is that thing he is afraid of? Um, squirrels. He's terrified of squirrels. <laughs> Are you serious? A warlock who's afraid of squirrels? <laughs> The children set out for the warlock's house. The warlock's place was far away. In the evening, they ate and rested in the forest. Come, have some snacks. In the morning, they continued their journey until they arrived at the warlock's house. That must be his house! There are too many fruit trees. How do you find the golden fruit? We must look for it without being seen by the warlock. So they wouldn't get caught by the warlock. They quietly entered the garden to find the golden fruit. Look at the cherries! How beautiful! I want to taste them! Mmm, this is paradise! Let's find that golden fruit before we caught by the warlock. Come here, little insects. While walking, they suddenly noticed that something sticky was getting on their feet. Hey, what's this? Where did this gooey stuff come from? I think I saw the golden fruit on that tree. Let's get it. But when they tried to walk, their feet were glued to the gooey substance and were unable to move. I'm stuck. I can't walk. <laughs> you fell in my trap. <laughs> oh no, evil warlock. I've caught so many kids with this magic gooey jelly! Yippee! <laughs> the warlock caught Hansel and Gretel and locked them in two small cages. What will he do to us? Will he throw us into the cauldron? Calm down, Gretel. We'll wait for the right time to escape. Gretel suddenly saw something on the other side of the cauldron. Look, there! I wonder what's that under the cover? The evil warlock came back with two bottles in his hands. I will add you to my collection soon. <laughs> Go 
collection? What's that? My jelly kids, of course! <laughs> wow, this must be the children that have disappeared and the healer mentioned to us. Gretel was terrified at the thought that they would suffer the same fate. Please, let us go, please! Let you go? Never! Why did you trap these kids in jelly? Because they went into my garden and ate my fruits. And do you know why my garden is full of tempting fruits? Why? To lure the children into my lush garden. Once they enter it, I catch them. I hate kids! You are so wicked and cruel! After adding the magic glue powder, the jelly will be ready for you two nosy kids. Look, Hansel! The keys! Uh, uh, I can't reach them. Come on, stretch a little more. Uh, uh, so, you're trying to escape, little worms. <laughs> Hansel, the squirrel! Yes, of course, squirrel! Hang tight! Where is this dog and glue powder? Gretel, throw a nut! Hurry! Come on, squirrel! Hey, warlock! There is a squirrel! What? No, no, yikes! He will no longer be able to harm children. Good riddance. The warlock cried uncontrollably as the squirrel stood in front of him. The jelly where the children were trapped started dissolving. Squirrels were the only creatures that weakened the warlock's power. Hansel, look over there! Children are free! The spell is broken! As the jelly fell off their bodies, the children unlocked their cages. Hansel and Gretel rushed to the golden fruit tree in the garden. Let's get the golden fruit. Here goes. Hooray! Our father will be cured. They happily went back home. Once upon a time, on a small animal farm, there lived Hansel and Gretel happily. A little one for you. Let's not forget the frocklet rooster. Gretel saw her dad had returned from town where he sold milk. Hey! Father is back! Their father told them there was a man with a monkey and a snake performing in town. He called himself the Snake Charmer. Oh, wow! The Snake Charmer? Hansel and Gretel were curious about this performance. The next day, they asked their father permission to go into town to watch the show. Here we are! When they arrived, Gretel noticed the tent in the square. There it is! Let's go! Come and see the dancing snake! 
See the amusing monkey! Hansel and Gretel were intrigued and entered the tent. It's crowded! I can't wait for the monkey and snake! The show began and the man uncovered the basket. He took his flute and started playing. Wow! Look, Look at, at the, the snake. snake! Everyone was enthralled watching the snake dance. Look, Look at, at how, how it dances. dances! Amazing! But after a while, the lovely snake got tired and stopped. Gone, dumb snake! Did I tell you to stop? The snake got scared and started dancing again. This man is heartless. He yelled at the poor snake. Yes, I didn't like that either. It was time for the monkey to perform. And now, here's Chi Chi, the talented monkey. What a cute monkey. Come on, greet the audience! <laughs> bravo, bravo! Now comb my hair! Now draw my picture! My dad or please, silly monkey. Yes, it looks, looks very similar. similar. Bravo, Bravo, Gigi, Bravo. Gigi. The show is over. Let's see the coins. Collect the coins. But when Chi Chi didn't do as he was told, the man became very angry. What are you waiting for, ugly monkey? Get the money. He is very cruel and evil. Chi Chi was so scared, she started collecting the coins. Poor Chi Chi, your owner is not a nice person. Yeah, he's wicked. We want to return to the forest, but we can't escape. Why are you hanging around there, silly? Collect the coins quickly. OK, I'm collecting right now. Hansel and Gretel were very sad for the monkey and her friend the snake. Poor animals! We should save them from this cruel man. Yes, you're right! When the show was over, everyone was gone. But Hansel and Gretel didn't leave. So how do we save them? We'll find a way. Let's check out what the man's doing. <laughs> Today I made a lot of money. I'm so hungry. We're hungry too. What? You have to work harder to earn your food. Oh, Chicho was right. He doesn't even feed them. Poor animals. What can we do, Hansel? Let's wait. He'll eventually come out of the tent. Finally, the man came out to get some fresh air. He's out. Come on. The key is there! Let's go now, before we get caught! We must get to the forest as soon as possible! But on his way back to the tent, the snake charmer saw them. You've got some nerve! Nobody takes my animals! They didn't stop until they reached the forest. Now that we're in the forest, we can get you out. Yippee! We're finally free! But they were unaware that someone had followed them. Ha <laughs> ha! You'll see now! Come on, little snake, you can go home now! Let's get you out too! What's happening? <laughs> so, you think you're going to free my animals? Think again! What are we going to do now? The man tied them up and set off for the town again. 
You'll be part of the show too. You'll work for me. <laughs> We have to do something. Hansel suddenly noticed the key hanging on the man's belt. Hey, look over there! How uh, how did you get out? Uh, come here! <laughs> I show you now. Come here! <laughs> He's coming! Hurry! Hurry! Oh no! He'll catch him! <laughs> Oh, my head! Everything is spinning. The children and the animals got rid of the evil man. If you weren't here. We would have never escaped from this cruel man. Thank you. We are so happy that you made it. You are free now. Come out, little snake. You can go back to the forest now. Goodbye. Chi Chi and the dancing snake return to the forest. Hansel and Gretel return to their home happily.